assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 5 of taxation and today's topic and the following lecture is going to be very 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 important because it is from your section b which will also be tested in your section c of taxation exam okay which comes under income tax so this topic is going to be about employment income all the types of employment income are going to be studied in this lecture there are various types of employment income and this area is very technical because here you will be introduced to various rules which you need to remember and that's why you are going to have lots of questions after we finish a certain rule so this lecture is going to be lengthy enough and you need to watch this lecture till the end because you need to see how every pieces of it are connected at the end and also we are going to do the major the big questions after combining all together at the end for which you need to watch this lecture till the end and you cannot skip this so let's start and before i start employment income i have just told you that it's a part of non-savings income right you have been introduced to three types of income non-saving savings and dividend and also the income tax rates for the three basic higher additional now we are going to study the non-savings income in detail so out of the non-saving one is employment income this is the major one most of your things that you will be tested in your taxation is from employment income we have other incomes also property income pension income those are later those will be coming in the later lectures but those are small portion employment income is the one which is the biggest portion and we are going to cover this biggest portion earlier on before we touch the other smaller ones right and most of the i would say around 60 to 70 percent will be tested on employment income that's why this lecture is very important so let's start we are going to focus on the scope of employment income what is employment income and what is not employment income okay in your exam you will be given list of incomes in that you need to identify out of this which falls as an employment and which falls as not an employment income otherwise you will go wrong not every employee income is employment income okay and in the exam sometimes they might not tell you that it's an employment income right they will just give a list of the names of the income you have to identify and there are ways we'll see in this lecture how do we identify next we are going to go on the calculation part third basis of assessment fourth what are the expenses we could deduct from our employment income for the purpose of tax there are some which we cannot deduct some we can deduct then we have approved mileage allowance payment which stands for amap there are certain rules for this which you need to know okay employment benefits then we have exempt benefits benefit means something other than cash when you are provided to your employees for example having a company car company house any type of gifts from the company they are they come and uh, any uh, medical insurance right any kind of benefit other than cash is known as benefit benefit in kind okay so what are the employment benefit what are the exempt benefit what are taxable benefit then vouchers and credit tokens these are specific okay vouchers and credit tokens living accommodation we have specific rule because employees are sometimes provi provided living accommodation also cars private fuel and vans right employees are provided cars the company car sometimes van also and with the car and the van the fuel also there are rules that's why they are separated from other benefits beneficial loan has a separate rule beneficial loan means when you are giving a loan below the official interest rate okay or at zero percent tax rate zero percent interest sorry okay it is interest free completely or lower interest than the official rate that is the meaning of beneficial loan assets provided to employees right and we have the practice objective test questions and we have other questions also which we are going to solve not just practice objective test questions then the summary so let's start the overview of this lecture i have introduced this first because you need to understand how each part is connected later on so first we are going to start with employment income then we started with the scope 
So scope means whether it is an employment or a self-employed. So employment versus self-employed. Then under employment, we have salary and bonuses. Then we have benefits. Salary and bonuses are in cash. Benefits are non-cash. That's why they are two separated branches. Then how do we assess the salary? What are the timing of the earnings? When should we recognize it? And what are the allowable deductions? What are the expenses you can deduct? For benefits, we have to know what are exempt and what are taxable. And when it's taxable, there are general rules and there are specific valuation rules like living accommodation, then car, then uh, assets provided to employees. All this has specific valuation rules. So, first part is whether an income when you are given it falls under employment or self-employment this is what you need to test okay so if you are an employee remember you will be taxable on your employment income okay and if you are a self-employed person you will be taxed on your profit okay under trading income provisions then it's a trading income then it's no longer an employment income for you if you are a self-employed person so if the nature of contract is of service the status and there are two types of contract one is is it of service or for services if it's of service employment you are an employed you have a nature of contract of service to provide that service you're providing a service employment for services self-employment please understand just by changing one word your status changes so in your exam you have to see whether the contract you are given is of service or services of means employment for means self-employed understand this and this will not be given in your exam this table you need to know it now even when a written contract is not there right there are some matters which you have to take care of because if those are present that means there is a contract if contract means there is an employment we'll see what is it so number one this is in the absence of written contract of service we are talking if they are absent you have to look for this text you have to see whether mutuality of obligation is there or not that means there is an obligation by the employer to offer work and obligation by the employee to take that work okay so when an employee employee is not in a position to decline the work when offered right he's not in a position it is up to the employer whether he wants to hire or fire you but once accepted employee cannot decline they have to listen whatever the employer says so employee does not have that control okay number one that means if these things are then employment is there so if employee is not in a position to decline work it's an employment next control employer controls everything what should be the manner what should be the method of work then if the employer control i mean if you you have to see whether you can control it or not if you can't control you are employed you are into employment if you can control you are self-employed this is how you see okay with all the points third one benefits if you are entitled to any kind of benefits for example you are receiving those benefits whether sick pay holiday pay then you are an employee then it's an employment income for you because these benefits are provided to employees they are not provided to self-employed people fourth we have basis of payment for example if you're an employee you will be committed to work for a certain number of hours fixed time and your payment will be decided based on hour week or month right it, it, it's there in your job contract then the length of engagement Usually, when you are employed, you are not employed for uh, one or two days or one month or two months. You are engaged for a long period of time. So, you have to see the engagement period also. Then, equipment. Equipment is not provided by the individual. Okay. You, as an employee, you don't provide the uh, equipment. You are already provided with the equipment. You just have to go and work there. All the equipments will be there in the office for you. Okay. Then personal service. You, if you're an employee, you have an obligation to work 
personally and exclusively for your employer. You cannot hire your own helper. Okay. You cannot hire a helper to help you. You have to do the work because you have the obligation to your employer, not your helpers. Part and parcel of organization. The work that is performed by the employee is an integral part of the organization. Okay. And not merely an accessory to it. It is not something accessory. That if you do also, it's fine. If you don't do also, it's fine. No, it has to be done. It's an integral part. Financial risk. Who bears the financial risk? There is a financial risk to employ of not being paid. Right? Now, sound management. Individual cannot profit from sound management. Okay. So if there is a sound management, you are an employee. You cannot be self-employed because self-employed will not have any profit from sound management. Now, there is a case which we are going to go through right now. Okay. Usually to decide self-employed or employed, it is based on the case most of the time. Okay, but it is not necessary for every one of the factor that we just went right now, financial risk, equipment and all to be present for an employer or employer relationship, right? There was an important case study regarding a vision mixer. Okay, so this vision mixer, they were engaged into series of short term contracts in the film and TV industry. So based on this case study, this were the following points. One, when you are deciding self-employed or employed, don't just look at one factor. Look at the overall picture. And no one factor is conclusive. Just looking at one factor, don't come to conclusion. Sometimes just looking at one factor, you might feel you are unemployed or self-employed. No. So in this particular case, what is the conclusion? He is self-employed. Why? If you see, it does not look like very much like business, right? Because he is engaged in a profession. Okay. And he did not supply his own equipment. Looks like his employee because he did not supply his own equipment. However, the number of separate engagements that he has is the key factor to decide that he is a self-employed in this case. Some factors might be seen because he does not supply his own equipment. Looks like he's an he's employed. But because he has separate engagements. See, when you are employed, you can only have one engagement with your employer. You cannot have separate engagements. And when you have it, then you are a self-employed. So just that one factor. Sometimes that one factor is heavy compared to the other four or five factor. Like this, you have to take decisions. In this case, this is mostly a contract-based work. So contract-based work based on engagements if you see you have to see the ability to engage in separate engagements or not if he has the ability self employed if he does not have the ability employed so here he is self employed okay now coming to the second part is calculation remember this performer all this together makes employment income first salary second bonus third benefit fourth reimburse expenses if you are given any kind of expenses like your employer pays you for the expenses reimbursing the expenses also is added then we have cash vouchers then all these are allowable deductions from your income first one expenses what type of expenses not any type of expenses expenses that are incurred wholly exclusively and necessarily for that employment in the next slide we'll go through what is the meaning of wholly exclusively and necessarily Okay, but for now know that this type of expenses are deducted. Then we have any contributions to employers, occupational pension scheme. I'm not saying personal pension scheme. I'm saying occupational pension scheme is also deductible. Then subscription to professional bodies. For example, if you are subscribed to ACC or any other SEMA or any other professional bodies, 
any expenses incurred by the employee, you can deduct. Charitable donation, you can deduct, which comes under payroll deduction scheme. Travel and substance expenses, you can deduct. Use of own car mileage allowance, deduct. So remember this few deductions. Then we arrive at employment income. Okay, now, how do you assess? Very important. We assess this based on the receipt basis, the earnings. Okay, and it's for all directors and employees. The um, moment they receive the earnings, it's on the receipt basis. Right? Earnings are recognized. And remember, the term earnings includes not only cash wages or salaries, but it includes bonus, it includes benefit, it includes round sum allowances, commission, everything together it is said earnings. Okay? Now, what, what about the date? The date of the receipt is the earlier of the following. Number one, actual payment of earnings or the day when they become entitled to such a payment. Whichever is earlier, that is the date of receipt. In case of director, there are some extra rules. They, they are more strict. Why? Because directors are in a position to manipulate the timing of payment. They have that authority. They can easily do that. That's why in order to save it, corporate governance, right? Extra rules are, now you have to check the earliest of the four dates. Earlier it was just two, now it's four dates. Earliest of those four dates is the date of the receipt for director. The two general rules that we just went through applies for directors as well. Now there are following two additional rules, that means more two dates, third and the fourth. When sums on account of earnings are credited in the company's account and where earnings are determined. So where earnings are determined, it is if it's before the end of a period of account, before the end of the period of account, it is taken as end of that period. And if it is taken after the end of the period of account, the date that earnings are determined. Okay, remember this when you are doing questions. I will, otherwise you will mess it up. Now, deductibility of expenses. So these are the expenses. When you are deducting expenses, there are some general rule and there are some statute. By statute, you can deduct. General rule says, expenses has to be wholly, exclusively and necessarily needed to perform that job. Performance of duty means, okay, any expense that is incurred before that job is done, it is not deductible. For example, you are spending something to gain knowledge, okay, or it is required for the experience of that work, okay, to gain requisite knowledge, it is not deductible. For example, if you are incurring a cost of attending evening classes by your school teacher, this is disallowed, you cannot deduct because this is something done before the job is done, right? Expenses has to be incurred while you are performing that job. If you are incurring it before, it is disallowed. Understand this. Then what is the meaning of necessarily? That means in your job, this has to be an inherent requirement of the job that this has to be done. It is not based on the employee's conditions that if employee circumstances like this, this will be performed. No, no, no. Every time this job is done, this has to be done. This requirement is needed. That is the meaning of necessarily. For example, let's say an employee who joins a golf club to meet their client. You cannot deduct this cost from the membership because it's not a necessary expenditure. Some employee might join golf club, some might not jo enjoy, uh, join the golf club. It is not an inherent requirement of the job that to meet client, you have to join a golf club. Therefore, you cannot deduct the cost of the golf club from your membership. Okay. Okay, deduct the cost of the membership. In other words, to be a necessary expenditure, each and every person undertaking that duty would have to incur it. It's not just you or for someone. Whoever is doing that job will be incurring the same cost, same expense. Then it is said that is a necessarily expense. Then we have wholly and exclusively. It comes together. This is wholly and exclusively means this type of expenditure when you are making, it should be make 
it should be made with the sole objective that means your objective is just to perform the duty of the employment that is your sole objective no other things two examples are there to show distinction first let's say an employer is required to wear some high quality uh, like clothes of high quality right for his employment so he purchased them so tell me can you deduct the expenditure spending on the high quality wear no this expenditure is not deductible why because if you wear a high standard clothes it not only satisfy your professional need but also it is satisfying the employee's personal need two needs are satisfied it can't be like that it can't be this and that it has to be this only then that is the meaning of wholly and exclusively so it is not deductible second example about home telephone spending on a home telephone partly you can deduct for example on that phone telephone any calls that are done for the purpose of business business call you can deduct any personal call you can't deduct why because business calls are made that falls it falls under the category wholly and exclusively okay but anything apart from the business call any personal call you can't deduct because it is not exclusive for the purpose of your employment now that was general loan now about statute by statute you are allowed to deduct some expenditure this is this other these are those expenditure first one employees contribution to occupational pension scheme this is within some certain limits remember when we were doing that pro forma calculation of employment income i told you under deductions one of the deduction was this contribution to occupational pension scheme this is by the statute next is about any fees and subscriptions to professional bodies okay provided that the recipient is approved for the purpose of hmrc and activities are included relevant to the individual's employment third any payment made to charity under the payroll deduction scheme statute by statute you can deduct expenditure on travel and other business related expenses you can deduct to the extent that it complies with the very stringent rules capital allowances we'll study later on what is capital allowances it is capital allowances means when you are investing on any plant and machinery they give you some kind of allowances right because you are using it for the purpose of employment so they give you some allowances so it is allowed for plant and machinery okay this you can deduct by statute because you normally use plant and machinery for the purpose of employment you don't use for your personal use now payroll deduction scheme what is it and how does it work so under this payroll deduction scheme employee authorizes his or her employer to make this deduction from their salary and pay the amount over to the specified charity and there is no limit to the amount of donation that employee can make under the scheme there is no limit in a way it's good so this donations are first deducted from the employer's gross pay before tax okay before tax is applied to the taxable pay before tax also you deduct this donation now travel expenditure travel expenses may be deducted only where they are incurred necessarily in the performance of duties that means you had to travel because in order to perform the duty of that employment or or where they are attributable to the necessary attendance at any place by the employee in the performance of employment duty that means according to your employment terms it's needed you have to be there at that place now for travel expenditure you need to remember you will not be given any relief for ordinary commuting or the cost of private travel it is only for the business travel ordinary means just from your work to home home to work those kind of travel are ordinary commuting for those type of journeys you are not given any relief okay so this is the definition of ordinary commuting journey between home and 
permanent workplace and that also each day there is no relief for this because this every day you have to make and the workplace has to be permanent okay or any place that is situated nearby the workplace if you are traveling from home to that place it comes under ordinary commuting therefore no relief private travel means a journey from your home to any place that is not for the purpose of your work now relief will be given where employee travels to visit a client why because that travel is a part of the performance of the duty to why are you doing to visit a client and visiting a client is a part of it's an integral part of performing your duty you have to visit the client and without traveling how will you visit your client that's the reason so that's why this expense is allowable so in this it will include travel undertaken by commercial travelers and service engineers because they usually move from one place to another place during the day now no relief is given for traveling between two separate employment however if an employee has more than one place where duties have to be performed for the same employer then traveling expenses between them are allowable you understand in addition to this there are following rules that apply to travel to your temporary workplace first one if you are traveling to your temporary place of work relief is given relief is given when you are traveling directly from home to temporary place of work next what is temporary workplace temporary workplace means it's a place where an employee goes to perform the task for a limited duration and also for the temporary purpose so a place of work will not be classified as temporary where employees working continuously for more than 12 months sorry for more than 24 months that means more than 2 years if continuously employees working in that it is not temporary workplace it is permanent it could either last for 20 more than 24 months or expected to last more than 24 months any of this it is not a temporary workplace understand this in taxation days are very important months are very important you will be asked then let's say employee passes their normal permanent workplace on the way to a temporary workplace what happens because it said that if you travel to the permanent workplace from your home no relief but what if you have just passed that permanent workplace but your main destination was temporary workplace in order to reach that temporary you have to go through your permanent workplace because it falls in between then what will you be still given the relief yes relief will still be available provided condition condition is employee should not stop at the normal workplace or any stop is incident let's say to pick up some papers you should not stop there you should just go where an employee's business journey qualifies for relief that relief is the full cost of the journey remember this if you are qualified for your business journey to get a relief that relief will be equal to the amount the full cost of that journey therefore an employee cannot make any kind of saving in this section remember this for example an employee might say that i am i will not travel if i don't travel i'm going to save the cost you can't do that so if you are not taking that normal community journey to work by not doing it you can't save anything okay now reimbursement of employees expenses by the employer this also something we can which you can deduct from your calculation you saw right this one is when an employee receives this kind of expenses from the employer that amount on employee is a taxable income remember this however an exemption applies what is that exemption that exemption is employee would be able to claim a tax deduction for the business related expenses under the rule set out above if you have this kind of expenses you can claim for a tax deduction like business travel professional subscriptions expenses which falls under wholly exclusively and necessarily provisions this type of expenses you can even claim tax deduction also 
because they, they are business related expenses and where an expense is partly allowed and partly disallowed what do you do then exemption can be applied to the allowable part only allowable part you can claim the exemption not the disallowed part let's say for example we'll take the home telephone bill once again okay so if the employee is reimbursed okay employee is reimbursed with the telephone bill of his home fully he's reimbursed that means he's fully given the expenses then this exemption to deduct tax can be already be applied to the business calls not on your per private call remember this and finally reimbursed expenses which are not exempt must be reported to hmrc if it is not exempt you have to report it to hmrc using a form 11d p 11d and this has to be included on the employee's tax return because you have to pay tax on it so you so you have to report it using a form what is the form of p 11d i think in my lecture 2 i have explained p 11d is which type of form and why do we use it we use it for benefits we use it for benefits other than cash if the employee is receiving something benefit we use this kind of form to list all our benefit so when employees are reimbursed with the expenses it is it comes under benefit it's a kind of benefit because it's non-cash therefore it comes under p 11 d form right all the pay form and all you have to know p 11 d then we have other p 60 p 45 one for leaving employees right all this i think we have four types so you can go back to my lecture and watch what p 11 d is for so now let's do some questions illustration one this is regarding reimbursed expenses so you have been given list of some expenses you have to decide which of this will be exempt and which of this will be taxable okay so ada is a marketing manager and is employed by dal now she have incurred the following expenses in connection with her employment now the question is state the tax position of the reimbursed expenses and explain how they should be treated by daily and you have been given how they'll be treated by the employer and the employee so if you just write by ada you will lose the mark for daily and if you just write by dal you will lose the marks for ada you have to write for both tax position of reimbursed expenses means whether it will be exempt or taxable that is the meaning of tax position whether it will be taxed or not taxed okay so we'll start with the first home phone line rental business call subscription to local gym subscription to chartered institute of marketing and train fares to meet the client now tell me out of this which of this will be exempt for the tax purpose first of all understand the reimbursement of expenses is a taxable income right but unless ada claims a tax deduction for this so if something is there are rules right one is a general rule to exempt the other one a rule by statute so first we'll see the exempt home call business call 85 this is exempt okay line rental is not exempt then subscription to local gym not exempt 1200 subscription to chartered institute of marketing it's exempt and the train fare to meet client exempt so if you see out of the five three are exempt two are not exempt you have to give reasons because they told explain okay first reason tell me why 85 was exempt why could you exempt you have to know the reason because this is what we have studied because business call is done wholly exclusively and necessarily for the performance of the duty so you have to write it wholly exclusively necessarily it follows this three rule don't write wen i'm writing it for you to understand then subscription to the chartered institute it's an allowable professional subscription professional subscriptions you can exempt so this one is professional subscription 
then we have train fares to meet the client it's an allowable travel expense because they told if you meet client and all it's an allowable travel expense okay now so you can this expenses can be reimbursed by ada to ada by the company which is free of tax so without reporting them to hmrc you don't have to report them to hmrc and they are free of tax what about the other two that is line rental 100 and subscription to local gym 1200 it's 1300 right what about this 1300 this 1300 are not incurred first you have to give reasons why they are not exempt because they are not incurred this one wholly exclusively and necessarily for the performance of the adder's duty and they do not even fall under the allowable expenses example travel so there the employer this time has to report the reimbursed expenses to hmrc who has to report it he has to report to hmrc about the reimbursed expenses on what form you need to know the form on adas p11 p11d form you have to know the correct form also and this is the company is doing what about ada and ada must include this 1300 as taxable income it's a taxable income for ada he has to include this 1300 on her tax return okay tax return on tax return for this year for the, this tax year that is 2022-23 that's it so now we have moved to amap the allowable rates are this is for employees who use their own car for business purpose okay and when it is so they are paid a mileage allowance by their employer hmrc approved mileage rates which are tax allowable are like this first 10000 mile pa stands for per annum first 10000 miles per annum 45 pence over 10000 miles 25 pence okay now this is how you decide okay if the mileage allowance that is paid by the employer is equal to amap there is no benefit or expense but if your payment by the employer is greater than amap then it's an excess you have received an excess therefore that excess is treated as a benefit for the employee okay that excess is assessed as a benefit and if the payment to the employee is less than the amap the difference is an allowable deduction from employees employment income this three treatments you have to know in your exam it could be any of this three either equal most of the time it is the second and the third condition more or less equal very less I've, you can see but um, most of the time it is the second and the third either excess either difference if it's an excess benefit if it's difference allowable deduction from employment income now the am amap rates can also be used to calculate allowable motoring expenses other than employment in the circumstances other than employment where you can use it in the self employment rate or condition example mileage allowance deduction in relation to a property business property we have not covered here it will be the next lecture okay there also we have mileage allowance deduction in relation to a property business if your business is a property business and where fixed rate expenses are claimed by a self-employed trader we have not yet touched self-employed that will be the last after we have finished all the employment conditions i mean all the expenses all the incomes 
of the employment then we'll touch self employment but for right now you know that when we go there am ap raise we can use there also that time to calculate allowable motoring expenses how it will be done will be shown in that lecture when we do self employment no, not right now now you have to know it from the perspective employee excess the difference and equal so now let's do some questions on am ap we have three questions here illustration 2 test your understanding 1 and test your understanding 2 all dealing with am ap so let's quickly do that now illustration 2 you have to calculate the expense claim for the tax year that can be made to reduce the taxable employment income right so an employee uses own car for business travel during the tax year she drove 13000 miles on business her employee paid her 30p per mile okay now so what is the mileage allowance that you received 13000 into 30p 3900 right you have received 3900 this will be tax free but in addition employee can make an expense claim can she we'll see because we have to see the approved mileage allowance approved mileage allowance according to that first 10000 at 45 over 10000 the balance is at 25 so we'll calculate that and see so here at 10000 miles it is at 45 pence which will be equal to 4500 pounds then excess is 3000 which total is 13000 right which will be at 25 and this is 750 so add both it is 5250 and if you see Amount that you have received tax free is three thousand nine hundred, but you are allowed up to five to fifty. You are taking less than you are allowed, so it's an excess or a difference. It's a difference. You can claim more. So take the difference five to fifty minus three thousand nine hundred. One three fifty. You can claim this much of expense. One three fifty. Okay, so you can deduct this when you are arriving at the employment income. This one three fifty. Now we'll go to test your understanding one. Okay. Now I think it's a little bit too big. I'll make it smaller. Okay. Here he has traveled twelve thousand, and he has paid forty two. Similar question. Calculate how much of the mileage allowance is taxable, and how would your answer differ if it is thirty five, A and B. First, let's do A. So here, twelve thousand into forty-two pence will be equal to five forty. This is the income. Okay. Now, less allowable expenses because this is the benefit you have received. That's why it comes under income. You have received forty-two pence into twelve thousand miles. That's why it's an income. It's a benefit. Now allowable expense. What you can deduct the approved mileage allowance payment only, which is first ten thousand. By the way, the similar way I have not done for this one, but you can write this as income and these are expenses and all. Okay, even for illustration two. Same you have to do for test understanding one and two as well. I've just showed you the figure there. So ten thousand into forty-five is four thousand five hundred and two thousand because twelve thousand into twenty-five, which is five hundred. So that means max allowance will be five thousand 
if you see you have received more so it's 40 is the taxable amount because your income is more than the allowable expense this time what happened which out of the three situation which one it is the second situation you have an excess which is now taxable because this is also a benefit okay how the situation would differ in part b if it's 35 if it's 35 12000 into 35 which would be 4200 here you don't have to do any change it will be 5000 only okay so you have received income is 4000 you can deduct up to 5000 it's less that means now this time there's a difference it's not excess it's the third situation okay so 5000 minus 4000 true 4200 there's a difference of 800 this time it's not excess it's less so this is an allowable expense so you can deduct this from the employment income this difference as an allowable expense coming to test your understanding too so here requirement says compute the income from employment okay so all this things and all i don't want to know which company he's employed as and whatever okay but he has been paid some salary some bonus so here they are taking the overall employment income like not just the am ap here he has a monthly salary of 950 in addition to the basic salary he is paid in may a bonus every year in may he's, he receives a bonus okay you can see may 2021 22 23 he has been receiving a bonus okay to the previous 31st october and relates to the sales he achieved in the year to the previous 31st october okay so now this are the following payments contribution to occupational pension scheme subscription to chartered institute and payroll deduction scheme okay so you have to know what are the incomes you have to know the allowable deductions either from general rule or either from the statute and deduct okay so this question is different it is not having a m a p okay so let's quickly do that first always start with basic salary whenever you are given all the different types of employment income commission bonus say um, salary other benefits always start with the salary even if in the in the pro forma also previously i've shown you right the calculation of employment income starts with salary first because that is the most important and it's easy also in that way okay so salary will be they told monthly salary so annually it will be 9 15 to 12. always try to see that you bring everything into same terms if you are doing it monthly everything has to be in monthly terms if you want to do it annually you have to bring everything into annual terms you cannot give some figure in monthly some in annual some in weekly students often do this mistake in tax that's why i'm repeating this over and over again anyway so the amount is 11,400. then we have bonus add bonus with salary okay remember bonus is on which basis the seat basis you have to write it Just now even through the basis right which day which bonus are you taking they asked for the tax year 2022-23 only so which one falls in this you need to understand the tax year by the way sixth it starts from sixth of april to fifth of april 2022 and 2023 it is this one may 2022 it's not may 2023 looks like it falls in 2023 no because it's may it's after april tax year ends in 5th may april ends at 5th april 2023 that's why you have to know the starting and the end of the tax year always otherwise you'll make this mistake so the amount is not 2700 1260 because it's receipt basis whatever you have received up to that date so now it's 12,660. Deduct your expense, allowable expense. What is the allowable expense from your tax? 
is contribution to occupational pension scheme deductible? This one, occupational pension scheme, yes. Subscription, yes. Payroll deduction, yes. All three are deductible in this case. So, 100, 342, 200. All you can deduct. Once you deduct, you reach to your employment, EI, employment income, 12018. Okay. Next is employment benefits. So, in addition to salary, there are benefits which we need to add. And benefits also you have to pay income tax. Okay. Now, taxable benefit and exempt benefit. If it's taxable, only for taxable, obviously, if it's exempt, why do we need the rules? Right. For taxable benefit, there are some specific rule and some general rule. General rule means all the other benefits that does not fall in the specific rule are general rule. General rule means the cost of providing that benefit to the employee. Whatever the cost employer is incurring, okay, that is the amount of the benefit for the employee. When you have to decide the cost for the benefit, the cost that employee has incurred, that is the amount. General rule says that and that also the marginal cost of providing that benefit. Special rules. We have for vouchers, living accommodation, cars, private fuel, van, beneficial loan, use and gift of assets, and living accommodation expenses. This is the area you need to be you need to pay careful attention from the point of your exam also. Because this is the area in every taxation exam, you are always tested on these two rules. One is general rule. If it does not fall in the special rule, general rule. If something falls, for example, if it's a car, you have to immediately recall that it's under special rule. General rule does not follow there. It's not that cost of providing the car is the amount of the benefit. No, car has special rule. If it's a private fuel, special rule. If it's a living accommodation, special rule. If it's none of this list, automatic general rule, the cost of providing that benefit. That's how you decide. You need to remember this list, by the way. Okay, 100% all the time, every F F6 exam, every sitting you see the past paper, one question you will see on these rules, special rules. It could be anything, but they will not give you the, all, the entire list, no. They don't always test all the area, maybe one or two. One or two only. But we don't know what is that one or two they might ask. Could be a uh, living accommodation and car, could be beneficial loan and voucher could be any two or one or three but not they don't go more than two right most of the time it's one or two anyway but you have to know the rules when you're studying you are a student you have to be a good student you have to know all the rules now rules applicable to all benefits okay this two rules general or specific applies to all taxable benefit and the taxable benefit will be reduced by any contributions that employee makes. Sometimes it happens that when employee is given something by the employer, employer also makes a contribution towards it. They also pay something towards it. So whatever employee makes a contribution, by that amount, that benefit, taxable benefit will be reduced. That means you have to pay less tax now, right? Because it's going from the employee's pocket. But for all the benefit, it will be reduced except one. That is private fuel. For private fuel, it does not matter the amount of contribution employee makes it will not be reduced by the employee if employee there there's an exception if employee makes full contribution that means entire amount of the private fuel is paid by the employee then you can reduce then nothing is taxable if employee is partially contributing let's say private fuel amount is 5000 employee is paying 2000 out of it no that 2000 you cannot reduce either full or no benefit at all i mean no reduction at all anyway when we go to the private fuel which which will be touching a little bit later i'm going to repeat the same point but you know just for now i thought of explaining the point right now next 
time a portion sometimes whatever the benefit you are giving might be available for the part of the tax year not the entire tax year for example car maybe you are using for just 6 months or 8 months right you have to time a portion the taxable benefit also now exempt benefit exempt benefit you need to be a little bit careful here okay this task is going to be a little uh, boring as well as a lengthy task why list of exempt benefits are there list of exempt benefits are there which you need to remember and uh, i know that uh, memorizing everything in one sitting is not possible but every day if you keep recalling and uh, the best way to test whether you have understood exempt benefit or not is to do a question from your vision kit and see whether when you are doing the calculation are you able to identify that this is exempt this is taxable this is exempt this is taxable if you are able to identify correctly the first time be very confident and sure about yourself that you have understood then don't doubt yourself if you have haven't don't worry you can still go back and revise because this exempt benefit has a list of it we'll go through it now before i'm starting i'm telling you this okay because when i go you might be thinking ah oh, when is this finishing why is it too long that's why before only i'm giving a warning that is going to be a big list so starting with any kind of small benefits or we can say tribal benefit benefit which are no more than 50 okay 50 per gift are known as tribal benefits the small benefit not very big except voucher for voucher separate rules are there when we attach voucher i will explain you okay whenever they say accept this one leave that part aside that rule does not apply for that so accept voucher this 50 applies for the other benefits okay so if the employer incurs when they are giving a gift to an employee and the cost of that gift is no more than 50 okay it is exempt you can exempt it you don't have to pay tax that benefit is exempted and that gift you are not giving as a recognition of the services you are just giving it let's say you are giving a birthday gift to your employee the cost is 49 or 40 so this exemption applies to low value benefit given for non work reasons let's say birthday gift usually you are giving a mug or a pen or a diary or anything because usually birthday gifts and all we give of a low value it's not possible we are giving high value gifts to each and every employee during their birthday not possible right so low value if it's high value it does not fall under this category second exempt is employers contribution to a pension scheme employers i'm not saying employee i'm saying employers e and a uh, difference third subsidize on site restaurant or canteen facility exempt provided remember they are provided for all employee all employee have the facility to the canteen then is exempt fourth giving a car parking space to employee at the workplace or near the place of work okay including the reimbursement of the cost of such a parking place exempt if you are giving one mobile phone to your employee exempt but if you are giving two the other one will be taxable and how it will be given i'll explain you later under the assets when you are providing assets to your employee under that category okay this mobile telephone includes smartphone also okay one smartphone exempt two smartphone the th next one will be uh, taxable if you are giving three phones one will be exempt the other two will be taxable that's how it works then if you are giving certain kind of benefit to encourage employees to return to the work it is exempt okay other than giving private car why car we have another separate specific rule that's why it's not applicable here you cannot exempt car no because for car it's a taxable because we have specific rule for car so other than giving private car if you give any of this it is exempt for example you are giving work buses you are giving subsidies for public bus services you are giving them bicycle you are giving them safe cycling safety equipment all this are exempt then christmas party annual dinner party annual dinner dances right provided that this event cost is less than what it should not exit 150 it should not exit 150 per head per annum that is annually per head if the cost exists 150 then what if cost per head exists 
full cost of the annual event is taxable. It's not partial. That only excess of 150 is taxable. No, no, no. Full 150. The full cost, in fact, whatever is. If it's 160, the full 160 is taxable. If it's 200, full 200 is taxable. If it's 140, not taxable. Exempt. Up to 150. Up to 150 means even if it's 150, it is exempt. Because 150 minus 150 is 0. So what is there to tax? They said up to 150. If it exists 150, they didn't say 150 and above. So 150 also exempt. Now, workplace nurseries for child care. For employees, their child, there are some workplace nurseries and all exempt. Relocation and removal expenses up to 8,000 exempt. We have rules for it. Relocation. We will go through it a little bit later. First, we will finish with this list. Then, loans with a beneficial interest rate. Okay. Beneficial loan. We have a separate rule. But, loans with a beneficial interest rate, provided that the loan in the tax year, throughout the tax year, in total, if you take, let's say you have five employees, you are giving loans to all the five employees. All the five employees know that you have given, you combine them together, should be less than 10,000 during that tax year. Should never exit more than 10,000 in any part of that tax year, any month. The full tax year, it has to be the full 12 months, it has to be less than 10,000. The full amount, combined amount. Then it is exempt. The expenses incurred by employee who visit, right? Or who might be away overnight on employee's business, such as telephone calls, home, laundry. So what are these expenses? For UK, it is five pounds per night, maximum up to five pounds per night. And overseas, 10 pounds per night. Okay. Now, home workers additional household expenses. If you are working from home, you might be given some additional expenses by the employer. So here, up to six per week. This is weekly. Please understand if something is night or month or weekly or annually or quarterly, you need to know it. Just knowing six is not enough. You have to know it is six per week. Because the amount sometimes they might give you daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly. So it is six per week. Okay. Six per week can be tax free. And for this, you don't have to give them any evidence. And if you want to exempt the higher amount, anything above six, you have to give them supporting evidence that any payment that is made to you is in respect of carrying out your employment duties from home. This is usually for those people who work from home. If they can prove that those extra cost is because they have to incur that for carrying out their employment duties from home. If they can prove this through evidence, more than six also you can exempt. And provision of job related accommodation. If it's a job related accommodation, I'm not saying living accommodation. Living accommodation comes under specific rules. Job related accommodation, also we have certain rules which we'll go through. But for now, you know it's exempt. Up to 500 per employee, per tax year, it's per per. For one employee, up to 500 per tax year, it is exempt. This is for recommended medical treatment to enable an employee to return to work. Remember, this is not any type of medical treatment, not the general type of medical treatment that is done annually on employees. No. It is recommended. For example, an employee has been injured very badly. They are not able to work. For you to make them return to work, you have to spend. So that they are able to work. That is something which is recommended also for certain employees based on their condition. So up for those employees up to 500 for the tax year exempt. Entertainment that is provided for an employee. Why? by a reason of employment by a genuine third party a genuine third party is let's say giving you some ticket or seat at a sports or some cultural event okay provided by a business contact it's not provided by anyone it is provided by your business contact or your client all this is done to generate goodwill then it is exempt any gifts received because of the employment from a genuine third person provided that the cost of 
any one source does not exit 250 in a tax year. Okay. That means if you are receiving gift, you could receive the gift from various sources. From any person, any third party when you are receiving, it should not exit 250. If it exits 250 from any one of the source, it is taxable. Then it's not exempt. Long service awards in kind. For example, you are given some award for being in the employment for 20 years or 10 years or whatever. So this is usually to mark employment. They have given you the year. In fact, so you don't have to worry about the years also. To mark employment of 20 years or more. Okay, let's say they are giving you some gold watches and all. So, are exempt up to the cost of 50 for each year of service. Each year service you are giving up to 50 for each year is exempt. But this long service you are giving, let's say every year you are getting gold watch, up to amount 50. Provision of travel, accommodation and subsidence during public transport disruption caused by industrial action. For example, due to some strike or something in the country that is going on, some war, anything. Employees are not able to come to work. Then you give them the travel. Then you will provide them accommodation during that time. Okay. That is exempt. Employer funded training. Where the expenses of training are paid by the employer. No taxable benefit arises on the employee. Exempt. Medical insurance for treatment and medical services especially where there is a need for treatment arises while abroad in the performance of employment duties. Let's say you are abroad. You went there to perform your duty and there you need a treatment. So exempt. Medical insurance and treat medical services, exempt. Security assets and services. And this security assets and services is given due to your employment only. Okay. Recreational or sporting facilities available to employees. It is only for the employees. If it is given to the general public, then no, it is not exempt. Okay? Either you are providing it directly or through a voucher. Whatever way, it is exempt. Welfare counseling for employees, exempt. But remember, when you are giving welfare counseling, okay, this kind of service needs to be provided generally to all employees. If it's like that, so it is exempt. Employee liability insurance. This liability insurance is aimed at protecting an employee from a work-related liability. So employee liability insurance, exempt. Pension advice for employees. Exempt but limit is there. The first 500 in the tax year for a pension advice exempt either employee is giving that advice or employer is reimbursing the cost that's incurred by an employee anyway the first 500 exempt but remember when you are giving this pension advice this support has to be there for other employees as well some categories if you are giving for let's say all employees nearing retirement. It's a category. So in that category, if you are giving advice, you have to give advice to all. Not all the employees of the organization. Okay. What would young employees do with the pension advice? Right. They're not in the age to receive the pension because they're still working. They're still getting their salaries and bonuses and benefits and all. It is the employees who are nearing their retirement age. They need this pension advice. Now. Provision by employers of eye care test or a corrective glasses for video use by their employees. Provided this is available to all employees. If you see some type of exempt benefits must be if you give it to all employees, then only it will be exempt. If only certain selected employee, it will not be exempt. Awards up to 25 under a staff suggestion scheme exempt which is available to all employees. This is usually for those suggestion which is outside their duty. Okay. And if you can, I, uh, if you can justify 
that your idea is worth taking forward it is going to have a financial importance to the business higher awards might be given to you as i told you in your tax exam you need to refer to one or two benefits within a question which you need to identify as exempt i know this list is long but even for exemption they will give you one or two not the entire list in your exam now as i told you relocation and removal expenses up to 8000 is exempt but there are some criteria okay which needs to be met even up to maximum of 8000 to be exempt the following criteria has to be met what are those the expenses are incurred in connection with either of this first totally new employment second new role with the existing employer or a change in the location at which employees duties are carried out okay so any of this if expenses are incurred maximum 8000 exempt it is necessary to acquire a new residence as commuting commuting would not be viable why did you relocate because it is necessary for you to do that and commuting between your work and your current place is not possible is not viable that's why you have to acquire a new residence now the cost met or reimbursed must be qualifying expenses not any expenses what are those qualifying expenses this include cost of selling the first house because obviously if you have to relocate you have to sell your first house right so qualifying expenses for the qualifying purpose so selling the first house you have to travel also so that is also qualifying expense and subsistence when looking for a new house you will be looking for a new house that is also a qualifying expense removal expense again qualifying expense and interest on the bridging loan whilst the employee owns both homes what well, the amount any interest that is there on that loan for the homes that employee owns qualifying expense so you have to look for all this then expenditure must be incurred by the end of the tax year following the one in which the employment change occurred okay following the one in which for example your employment change to which tax year 2022 the next tax year 2023 if you if any expenditures incurred that time it is a qualifying expense you can you can exempt up to 8000 now for recommended medical treatment there is an exemption and that exemption is for expenditure incurred by employees on recommended medical treatment only by healthcare professional okay any exemption any treatment by healthcare professional you can accept then for an employee who is unfit for the work after a period of sickness absence and this has to be for at least 28 consecutive days okay for the purpose of assisting the employees return to work that's why this medical treatment is done okay and the exempt benefit is up to 500 per employee per tax year now how do you report this benefit remember benefits are non cash okay they are non cash taxable benefit so non cash taxable benefits are also reported to hmrc okay who reports them to hmrc by the employer employer reports them to hmrc through which form p11d and it is done by the end of the tax year so employer will be completing for each employee the p11d form if they are given the benefits there all the taxable employment benefits only will be shown only benefits no salary no nothing because p11d is for benefits in kind only if you can recall the payee form and all from my lecture too then a copy is given to the employee i don't recall whether it's lecture 2 or 3 but where we have introduced you payee p11d is there okay there were three four types of form i think one is p11d one is p45 one is p60 
I could I cannot recall the other one. Now, so one employee is doing it. Copy will be given to the employee so that they can include this benefit values on their tax return because employee finally has to provide their tax return showing their total benefit. For that, copy is given. Okay, if it's required for that tax year, the tax return. Now, alternate will be the alternate basis. Employer can apply to HMRC to tax a non-cash benefit through the payee. Can you recall what happens to payee? Automatically, tax gets deducted and then it is paid to the employee. So, same way, employer can, for benefits, employer can apply to HMRC to do the same. This is known as payrolling of benefit. Okay. If the employer payrolls a benefit, what happens? What happens? Employee does not have to provide their tax return about their benefit. They don't have to report this. Automatically, tax will be cut from their benefit. They, the tax will be paid, okay, on their benefit under the pay system. The advantages of doing this is to the employee is tax that is collected on benefit will be more accurate and it will be collected on a real time basis also. So there will be no chance of income tax being underpaid and there will be no unexpected tax liabilities also. Second advantage is no need to declare the benefits on the employee's tax return. Administrative work is reduced, right? Now, disadvantages are there. What is the disadvantage? Cash flow disadvantage is there. Because under the system, tax will be paid earlier than the due. Earlier than the due means if it was under self-assessment, you are the one who is doing it. You would have, might have paid a little later. But because now it is already deducted from your system, payroll system will be paid earlier. Once a benefit is payrolled, what happens? Employer is also not required to include a benefit on their P11D. So there also cost saving is there. Because administration work is reduced on both the sides. Employer does not have to give an P11D form and include benefit. Employee does not have to give a tax return showing their benefit. Vouchers and credit tokens. The next one. From here, we have specific rules from this onwards, starting with vouchers and credit tokens. If an employer provides an employee with voucher, let's say department store vouchers, it's a taxable benefit. And how do you decide the amount? The value of the benefit is the cost to the employer providing that voucher. This is simple. What about the credit? If employee is provided with a credit token, let's say a company's credit card, then the cost of goods and services acquired is a taxable benefit again. Unless the purchase relate to expenses for which employee could claim a tax deduction. Let's say business travel. Because for business travel, you can claim tax deduction. But if you have purchased something for which for the exp for expense which is related to that for which you cannot claim tax deduction, then you have to pay tax. Now, living accommodation. So when an employee is provided with a living accommodation, this is how you assess the benefit. Because I told you this is specific. This is not the cost of the employee. This has a long list of rules, okay? Basic charge and we have additional charge. Basic charge is the higher, you have to remember all these rules by the way. Higher of annual value of the property and the rent that is paid by the employer. Remember, this is only applicable, the rent part, if the property is rented on behalf of the employee. If it is not rented, if it's owned by the employer, then rent will not be applicable. Then it's the annual value. But if it's rented, you have to check the higher rent or the annual value. If it's owned, just the annual value. Now, additional charges there, if the accommodation is an expensive accommodation, then basic charge will not apply. So you can see the formula is cost of providing accommodation minus 75,000. Why minus 75,000? Let me tell you why. Basic charge applies to any accommodation which is below 5,000. An expensive accommodation means anything which is more than 75,000. Understood? That's why. Okay, so remember 75,000. Less than 75,000 only basic charge. More than 75,000, 
with the basic additional charge is also there. It's not just the additional charge, basic plus additional charge. Okay, so cost of providing the accommodation minus 75,000 into the appropriate percentage. Okay, know that this charge is in addition to the basic charge, as I told you, and the formula is not provided in the examination. Your bad luck. <laughs> so, annual value. These are the things you have to take in the annual value. Okay, annual value will check the rateable value of that property. Okay, let's say yearly rental income that that property is expected to yield. And the good thing is, even though you are unfortunate, they didn't give you the formula. But annual value, they will always give in the exam. <laughs> now, expensive living accommodation. This is beyond 75,000. Okay, then additional benefit will arise. Here, cost of providing the accommodation is calculated like this. Original cost or market value. Why or market value? There are certain conditions we have to take market value. There are certain conditions we have to take original cost. That's why. For now, just know original cost or market value. Then you add any capital improvement prior to the start of the current tax year. Why? Because it has to be capital improvement. We didn't say any expense or anything. Okay. Because when you do this capital improvement, you can use that accommodation. It becomes of usable. Then you can, employees can make use of it. But it has to be before the start of the current tax year. Anything after that becomes, uh, let's say, normal expenses, right? revenue expenses then you can't say it's a capital improvement okay that's why prior to the start of the current tax year you can add with the original cost cost of providing that accommodation so that is the total is cost of providing accommodation and you need to know the percentage because they told into appropriate percentage that appropriate percentage is the official rate of interest ORI and the official rate of interest this year for the tax year 2022-23 is 2%. Is that 2%? Remember this 2%. Official rate of interest this tax year is 2%. So this is the rate that you have to apply. Okay. Now, where, as I told you, why market value? Then, where an employer has acquired this accommodation more than six years before first providing it to the employee. That means there's a six years gap during when the employer has acquired and then now he's giving to the employee. If it's more than six years, then market value you have to use. Okay, use the property's market value when first provided to the employee, not six years back. No rather than the original cost. So the original cost is replaced by the market value if it's more than six years. If employer has acquired the property more than six years before giving it to the employee, then only the market value, otherwise original cost. Now, so remember, this additional benefit will only be charged if the original cost plus the capital improvement is more than 75,000 together original not only original cost original cost plus improvement is more than 75,000 then only you can say it's a expensive accommodation it is not on the market value that you decide an accommodation is expensive or not no it is on your cost cost plus capital improvement capital improvement before the start of the tax year that means before 6th of april 2022 because start of the tax year they told they didn't say before the end of the tax year okay now additional benefit cannot be charged when the accommodation is rented rather than owned by the employer remember for additional benefit accommodation has to be owned if it's rented you can't do that owned by whom the employer we are talking about so the total living accommodation benefit are reduced to the extent that the accommodation is used wholly exclusively and necessarily for business purpose remember when you are calculating total living accommodation benefit also you have to see that that accommodation has been used for business purpose wholly exclusively and necessarily if some part of it is used for personal some part is business only business purpose we can uh, claim okay now 
job related accommodation earlier we told it is an exempt benefit right we'll read more about it so that's why job related accommodation no benefit because exempt to qualify as this property must be provided to property must be provided where it is necessary for the proper performance of the employee's duty i mean to perform the work properly that accommodation is required or for better performance example managers of the public house you need to give them the accommodation okay because for that type of employment it is customary for employers to provide living accommodation also and the third reason where there is a special thread to the employer's security so employee is residing in that uh, accommodation as a part of a special security arrangement let's say for prime minister then it's a job related accommodation and it is exempt out of this if you are staying it's not a job related if it's not job related it is not exempt how can you say for prime minister is job related because it is of their nature because they are prime minister so because of their work they have to be given this uh, securities this special uh, accommodation for them to be safe from this thread so it's a part of their job if they were not a prime minister if they were a normal person they don't need this accommodation they will not there will not be any thread to them because they are prime minister because of their work so it's job related so it is exempt okay managers of public house same they need it to perform better so job related exempt same for proper performance okay now in the exam you should assume accommodation is not job related if it is job related they will tell you otherwise the default position is it is not a job related accommodation okay now for directors there are some exceptions what are they a director can only claim one of one of the first two exemptions remember there are three one of the first two exemptions they can claim not the third one not the prime minister part if that also they can claim if they have no material interest in the company that means they hold no more than 5% of the company's ordinary share capital and and means both condition needs to be applied director works full time for the company okay works full time or the company is a non profit making organization either is working full time or the company is a non profit making organization then it is exempt so now let's do some questions before we move on to the next so here we are going to do three questions connected to living accommodation illustration 3 illustration 4 and test your understanding 3 and all three are examples of expensive accommodation we are going to have basic as well as additional charge first one and under all the three the question already tells that accommodation is not job related okay because if accommodation is job related it would have been exempt this is why you have to know exempt benefit from taxable benefit okay so now this is about a house provided to jack by his employer in july 2021 okay the cost was 200000 annual value is 3000 official rate of interest is 2% even if official rate of interest is not given you have to know it's 2% for this tax year and looking at the cost when you look at the cost you decide whether it's an expensive accommodation or not since 200000 is more than 75000 it is an expensive accommodation so the formula that we have just went through we are going to apply in this one let's do that so here basic charge okay we always start with the basic charge first basic charge is higher of
annual value and rent paid by employer. What is the annual value? 3000. They have given you. What is the rent? Zero. Why? Because they have not give, given you the rent paid by the employer. If they have not, it's zero. So higher of this two is 3000. Next additional charge. Okay. How do you take the additional charge? The cost 200,000 minus 75,000. Okay. Into official rate of interest 2%. How much? It is 2,500. And when you add 2,500 with 3,000, it's 5,500. This is your taxable benefit. Right? Very straightforward. Coming to illustration 4. Here we have some expenditure. Some we need to take, some we should avoid. Okay? Three types of expenditure is there. And here the question is Sachin lived in a house acquired by his employer, which cost, sorry, provided by his employer, which cost 90,000. When it was acquired in June 2017, it was 90,000. Okay. Now you have some expenditure. Conservatory added, redecoration, and garage extension. When you decide whether you have to take an expenditure or not, two things you have to see the nature of the expenditure, whether capital or revenue. The next is the date. The date of the tax. It has to be before the start of the tax year. If it is not, then you can't take. These two things will help you. So looking at this three, tell me the first one, whether you have to take this capital expenditure or not, you, whether you have to add it with the cost or not. Conservatory added. And look at the date, February 2018. It is before the start of the tax year. Okay, tax. We are taking for this tax year. So this, yes, we have to add. What about the next one? Redecoration. Redecoration we can't take. Why? It's not a capital expenditure. Redecoration is a revenue expenditure. And revenue expenditure we can't add with the cost. Garage extension. Garage extension we can't take. Why? Because it does not fall before the start of the tax year. It falls during the tax year. Look at the date, July 2022. When is the start of the tax year, by the way? 6th April. 2022 is the start of the tax. Any expenses after this will not, you can't add. So we can't take garage extension for the same reason. That means only 15,000 can be added. Now, market value of the two houses has been given. If it's at April 2022, 200,000. If it's June 2022, 165,000. And remember, if Whenever in this situation, wherever you require the market value, this 165,000 has taken all the capital improvements, whatever is needed. That means you don't have to adjust this figure. Okay. And employee has paid a rent of 100 per month to his employer. This is an employee contribution. Okay. And as I told you, any capital sorry any employee contribution will be deducted from the benefit except 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 private field which we are going to cover a little bit later okay that's the next benefit and same accommodation is not job related here are two requirements a and b in a we have two requirements first one this is for tax year 2022-23 in first one, Sachin moved in during June 2022. Second one, also Sachin moved, but this time property was actually acquired. Okay, employee has acquired the property when it was acquired in 2014. Okay, acquired for 90,000 because they told the cost was 90,000. Okay, so in the first one, it was rented. Second one, it is acquired. And part B. Assuming the two situations, one and two, okay, there are no improvements except the three, conservative, redecoration, and garage. Tell how the situation will differ, okay. I mean, the cost of providing the accommodation for calculating expensive accommodation charge, only the additional charge we, we want. 
for the tax year 2023-24. The next tax year. Okay. But first we'll do first one. So same how I have done for this one. Through this only I will show you. Same thing we have to take. Basic charge higher of annual value and rent. What is the annual value? 1700. Okay. For illustration 4. So where I have used it for illustration 3. Now I am going to use it for illustration 4 as well. So that it saves time. Okay. So here. Now, this will be annual value will be 1700. Same rent will be zero because they have not given the information about rent that employer has paid. So, zero. So, higher is 1700. Additional charge when you are taking. Okay. What is it? 90,000. Right. But remember. There are some capital improvements that you have to add with the 90,000. In the first situation, you didn't acquire. You have, employer was just rented. That's why, don't think about market value in the first situation. You can just take the cost. That is 90,000. With this 90,000, you can only add 15,000. And I have discussed the reasons why earlier. Because redecoration is revenue expenditure and garage extension is after the tax year, during the tax year, not before. So only 15, you can add with 90. So 90,000 plus 15,000, if you add, it becomes 105,000. So now, now, from 105,000, you have to minus 75,000, not 90. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So when you take like that, it is 600. So 1000 plus 1700 plus 600 is how much? 2300. But can we take 2300 entire amount? No. Why? Because situation A says Sachin moved during June 2022. So how, for how long did he occupy the property? from June 2022 to March 2023. Why did I take March? End of the tax year. I mean, date is 5th April, but if you see by the month, we can't take April the whole month, right? We can only take till March. So if you see, it is only 10 months from June to March. So 10 months of 2300 only you can take. How much? One nine one seven. And remember to deduct employee contribution. Always employee contribution are deducted except private fuel. How much? Employees are paying rent hundred per month. Is it twelve? Is it twelve? No. You have occupied it for ten months. So hundred into ten. So one thousand. So if you deduct one thousand from one nine one seven, remember this two thousand three hundred is restricted to one nine one seven only for ten months. So when you reduce it, it's 917. This is the amount, taxable benefit, according to first situation. Second situation, okay? Second situation, he have acquired it. And if you see, he has acquired it in 2014. And in the tax year 2022-23, it's more than six years. More than six years means you have to use market value. Which market value? 200 or 165? It is 165,000, this one, in June you have acquired, right? So when we are taking this market value, because it is in June 2022, remember, any capital improvements till that date, till, I mean, 2022-23 tax year has been adjusted in that 165. Anything after this date, then you have to take it. Okay, so this 165, you don't take 15,000 again and add. No, 165,000 only you take. So basic charge remains same, 1,700, only in the additional charge. So it would be 165,000 minus 75 into 2%. How much? 165,000. 
1800. 1800 plus 1700. 3500. Right? Same. 10 months only you can take. Just change the figure. That's it. How much it will be? Two nine one seven. So you just check. It just changed by one thousand, and rent will be same. So if you deduct thousand, it's one nine one seven. This is the annual benefit. Now part B. So part B situation one AI. This is A one. This is A two situation. Only in the basic charge will be same. That's why they only ask in the additional charge how it will be different. Okay. So here we used cost for the first one. What was the cost? 105,000. Here we use the market value. How much? 165,000. Okay. Redecoration, we anyway can't take. It's not a capital expenditure. But garage extension, last time we couldn't take because it was not in the tax year. This time we can take because it was incurred in June. Sorry, July 2022, which is before the starting of the tax year of 2023-24. Right? That's why this time, this is 10,000 we can take. Okay? So, garage extension 10,000 will be added for both. So, just add and you will get the figure. That's it. Test your understanding 3. So here you just need to calculate taxable benefit. You have been given the cost at 105, annual value of 2500 and 110 a month. Rent that is paid by employee. Accommodation is not job related. So it's very simple. Basic charge is higher of the annual value and rent. Rent would be zero because employer rent is not given here. So basic charge is 2500 with this add additional charge. Additional is 105,000 minus 75,000 add 2%. How much? Six hundred. Okay, it is six hundred. So this six hundred you add with two thousand five hundred basic charge, which is three thousand one hundred. You need to deduct the employees contribution one hundred and ten a month. One hundred and ten into twelve. One three twenty. Okay, and get the amount. So we have finished living accommodation. Now we are moving towards expenses that is connected with living accommodation because employees are not only paid accommodation with it expenses as well. But how do we deal with expenses is different from accommodation. Here, like lighting, heating, okay, even this are taxable. Whatever the expenses that is going with the accommodation is also taxable, okay. assets such as furniture mostly they are provided with the accommodation only they are taxed at 20 percent of the cost of each tax year and what if it's a job related accommodation what about the expenses with the job related accommodation if the accommodation is job related okay then there is a limit on the expenses that is there with the living accommodation Remember, job related accommodation is exempt, but any expenses with it, there is a limit. Okay, so this is the limit heating, lighting, and cleaning. Okay, it could be only for this, then repairing, maintaining, decorating premises, furniture, and other good normal for domestic occupation. So, when you are seeing the type of expense, you have to see for job related accommodation whether those expenses are under this category or not. Okay, and the taxable benefit for the expense. Is limited to 10% of the net earnings. Okay, that means 
employment income excluding this benefit for living accommodation okay now we'll do one question to understand this better illustration 5 expenses connect with living accommodation so here you have to calculate the taxable benefit for a assuming accommodation is not job related b assuming accommodation is job related so now we'll see the difference when it is job related and not job related so this is about fenda who is a hotel manager where her salary is 25000 and employment benefit is 500 and employer's occupational pension scheme is 2000 now second para is about uh, information about the accommodation so annual value is 1500 cost is 90000 and it contains furniture cost 10000 also it has household bills of 1000 okay so one is accommodation and the other ones are two expenses one is the furniture the other one is the household bills so tell me according to a when it is not job related how it will be taxable first of all will, will it be taxable yes why because it is not job related and when it is not job related it is taxable it is taxable so in a it is taxable in the normal way we'll calculate how we do accommodation benefit so let's quickly do that okay now a so normally how when you do accommodation charge you will charge it like that and when you have to decide whether it's an expensive accommodation or not it is not the annual value it is the cost that you see so here the cost is 90000 you see it's above 75000 so it's an expensive accommodation so first we'll charge a basic charge before we take expenses take the accommodation basic charge will be the annual value which is 1500 then we have expenses additional charge this is expensive that's why additional charge okay additional charge is 90000 minus 75000 what is the official interest rate for this tax year? It is 2% fixed, which is 300. Then now we are coming to the expenses. So here, normally we'll take the expenses, okay, for furniture. Remember, when you're taking an asset, it will be 20% of the value of the asset. So 20% of the furniture, which is 10,000, which is 2,000 then we have household bills household bills will be 1000 add total benefit is 4800 so when accommodation is not job related this is how you calculate your benefit first take the accommodation then take if it's an asset like furniture take 20 percent of the value and bills and expenses as it is add it and get the total benefit it is simple when it is not job related okay now b problem comes with b because it is job related when it is job related if you quickly go and try to do the accommodation benefit you will be wrong because it is job related and under job related it is ex exempt accommodation if it is job related it's exempt that's why you have to know your rules very well what is exempt what is taxable so exempt and even if it's exempt you can't ignore you have to write it so basic charge you will write you can write exempt or you can just write zero and make a or in bracket you can write exempt or make a note and write somewhere else explaining it's exempt okay then additional charge 
also exempt because no accommodation benefit will come if it's a job related so zero first two is zero and what about the furniture and bills remember when it is job related there is an additional rule you can't just take 20 percent of furniture and bills and add like that no yes furniture and build if you take like this 2000 1000 it is 3000 but there is a limit there is a limit when it's job related can we take the entire 3000 and charge no we'll see if the amount is above 3000 that we are going to calculate just now then you can take that amount if it's below 3000 you have to take it you can't take the entire 3000 so we'll see that and what is it it is restricted to 10% of your net income and your net income is all your income x minus expenses except this benefit except your uh, expenses that comes with living accommodation leaving that benefit other all the benefit you have to add so here what do you have to do take 10% of what you have been given the salary earlier 25,000 you have been given the employee benefits of 500 you have been given the employee's pension contribution of 2000 add salary and employee benefits and deduct the occupational pension scheme of 2000 that will be your net income so 25000 plus 500 minus 2000 take 10 percent of it which will be 2350 so you can't take 3000 limit it is restricted to 2350 so if you add all the total is 2350 this will be your taxable benefit according to b okay so after expenses with living accommodation the next benefit we are moving as gas private fuel and vans there are some similarities between the car and the van okay but the rates are different and private fuel definitely comes when you are given a car or a van otherwise private fuel benefit will not come so if you are charged like if you got benefit on any car on that only private fuel also will come okay so let's go first we'll go through cars this is applicable when employees are given company cars okay for so the private use okay when a company car is available to employ for private use a taxable benefit arises this is how it calculates and you need to remember it first we'll take the list price of the car and apply an appropriate percentage we'll see what is that percentage later on okay and less any employee contribution towards that car for example if employee is paying it could be partially maybe employees paying entirely or maybe one third of the price of the car okay of the cost then it will be deducted while calculating taxable benefit now the result is taxable benefit in fact any benefit where employees are contributing will be deducted except private fuel we'll see that later now how is the list price of the car determined you need to take the price when the car is first registered that is the list price of the car okay and this price also includes this prices okay it includes tax that price that is there has taxes in it okay so the price including taxes is the price published by whom the manufacturer of the car on the assumption that it is sold in uk as an individual sale in the retail market on the day before the car's first registration they will give you the car price don't worry so actual price that is paid for the car is not relevant here that's what you need to know and if you are an employee of a large company you cannot benefit from bulk discount okay by negotiating with the car dealer you can't do that their employee might negotiate with the car dealers so this list price also includes other accessories all accessories and extra fittings that is required okay 
at the time of issue plus the cost of any added subsequently sometimes you might see that some features are added later on or some additional extra uh, features are there so that list price will include the price of this also in that now any capital contribution made by the employee up to 5000 is deducted from the list price okay maximum 5000 beyond 5000 you can't deduct let's say employee makes 5500 of contribution you can only deduct up to 5000 if you make 4000 then 4000 it's like that now you need to know that don't confuse okay capital contribution that is done by employee can only be reduced from the list price okay for example you can't reduce it from the running cost of the car there will be so many costs which are incurred while running that car fuel insurance and all those things from there you cannot deduct this capital contribution it is only from the list price of the car okay because when you are making when employee is making contributions towards the running cost of the car of the use of that car it is deducted from that taxable car benefit and capital contribution is deducted from the list price this contribution and other contributions of the employee are different now you need to go through this table this table will be provided to you in the exam but you need to understand how the percentages are calculated so remember i told you list price into appropriate percentage that appropriate percentage is based on this table and we have two types of car one that runs on petrol and the other one is in diesel percentages are different and also it is based on the c2 uh, co2 emissions of the car okay co2 emissions per kilometer so if emission is from 51 to 54 grams for petrol it will be 15 percent petrol and diesel meeting the rde2 standard what is this rde2 standard will go through it in the next slide but for now know that any car meeting rde2 standard whether petrol or diesel does not matter 15 percent also you need to look at the grams the co2 emission and if it's a diesel car but not meeting rde2 standard it is 19 percent next if it is 55 grams for petrol and diesel car meeting the RT, rde2 standard 16 and diesel car not meeting rd to 20 and above 55 if anything is above 55 you have to do an additional working to get that percentage percentages are not automatically given it is only given for 51 to 54 and 55 grams and most probably even in your exam you will be given the last category so that you do the extra working okay so any gram okay five grams okay each complete remember it needs to be complete each complete additional five grams that is above 55 grams this is how you calculate an additional one person is added to what either 16 or 20 because you see at 55 gram petrol and diesel is 16 diesel not meeting standard is 20 so with that only you will keep on adding one person if it is petrol and diesel car meeting rd2 then the 50 with 16 you will add one if it is diesel car not meeting rd2 emission standard then with 20 you will add one person okay and when you add remember whether it is petrol and diesel with rd2 standard or diesel car without rd2 standard maximum maximum percentage could be up to 37 percent beyond 37 you can't go if you are getting 38 also it will be 37 if you are getting 39 also it will be 37 okay and if you if you see that it is just an addition of 4 percent for example metrol and car diesel standard is 50 that one is 19 this one is 16 that one is 20 if you see it is just an addition of 4 you add 4 with 15 becomes 19 add 4 with 16 becomes 20 this is how it keeps on working okay it is just a difference of 4% now for electric cars that is about petrol and diesel what about electric cars in UK we have electric cars as well so a 
applies to electric cars with zero CO2 emission. This you need to remember. And for hybrid electric car, okay, CO2 emissions will be between 1 and 50 grams. Okay. And the electric range of that car is very relevant. So this is that table you need to know. If it is 130 miles or more, 2%. 70 to 129, 5. 40 to 69, 8. 30 to 39, 12. Less than 30, 49. As more like, as the electric range reduces, percentage increases. It is an inverse relationship. It is not that electric range increases, percentage increases. It's not like that. Less and less electric range, more and more percentage. Why? Because our objective is to what? To increase the electric range as more and more. Because having electric is more, CO2 emissions will be less. So that's why we are charging 2% at 130 miles or more. But if the range is less, which is not so good, percentages are more, 14%. Because our objective is to make our miles more and more with electric cars. Because CO2 emission is less with those type of cars. So it makes sense when you are charging less. For more electric range and high for less electric range. Okay. Now, this there are some additional points one needs to take care of. When an employee changes a company car, okay, during a tax year, what happens? You need to separately calculate for each car. Okay. Each car needs to be done separately and with appropriate time apportionment some car you might have taken during the half of the tax year maybe some uh, last three months accordingly well adjust maybe one you might have for the whole tax year then let's say a car is unavailable for a certain period of time during the tax year but before the tax year after the tax year it is available during the tax year it's unavailable some for some period of time let's say it, if it was under repair after a crash then what happens? Then you have to do this. The benefit charge, okay, you need to reduce it proportionately. Okay. And remember, reduction can only apply if the car is unavailable for, let's say, a period of at least 30 days and it needs to be continuous. It's not like one day you're using another day, you're not using another day. So, like that, you accumulate and get 30 days. It's not like that. Continuously. 1, 2, 3, 4, like that, 30 days, when you see at least 30 days, the car should be unavailable. Then only you can reduce the taxable benefit for the car, proportionately. Otherwise, you are not eligible to reduce it. Now, so car benefit also takes running expenses of that vehicle also. Okay, already when the car benefit is calculated, it already took all the running expenses of the vehicle with it. So, you don't have to, so there is no additional benefit when the employer pays for insurance, for road fund license, for maintenance, no, no additional benefit. Already is taken in that car benefit. Now, let's say if a driver is provided with a car or a chauffeur, because in UK, we have a chauffeur with a car. Let's say if they are provided then this is an additional benefit then you need to calculate separate benefit charge okay and if you are giving up private fuel remember with the car comes because without the fuel how are you going to drive the car so private fuel will come with the car that additional benefit and the way of doing it is different we'll see later first let's finish with the car now when more than one car is made available simultaneously to an employee then the benefit that you are going to calculate for the second car will be done as the same as you have done for the first car in the same manner taking the appropriate percentage deciding what are the miles if electric hybrid petrol diesel whatever right everything will be same it's just the cars are different now coming to the pool cars what about pool cars if a car is pool car pool car means everyone is using that car there is no taxable benefit. Okay. And to qualify for the pool car, there are some conditions that needs to be met during the tax year. And all of the following conditions has to be met, not just one or two. And during the tax year. 
First one, the car must be used by more than one employee to say it's a pool car. Okay. It's not that if you are giving it to one employee, other employees can't use it. Then it will no longer be a pool car. It has to be made available for other employees. Then it's a pool car. Second condition. No one can keep it near their home or at their home at night. Third, any private use must be made, okay, made incidental to the employee's business use of it. Let's say because employees are using it for the business purpose. Because of that, some uh, they have used it privately also. Merely incidental mean only because of that reason it occurred. Because if the employee did not use it at all, then you can't say they have used it for private use. So even if private use of that car was made, it only be, it was only possible because they were making a business use of it. For that, there was some private use. Okay. So if these three conditions are met, it comes under pool cars. Now we'll do questions on the car before we move on to private fuel benefit. So let's quickly do that. So we are going to do four questions now. Illustration six, test your understanding four, illustration seven, and test your understanding five. So in illustration six, you have to explain the difference between the car with a diesel meeting RD2 standard and not meeting RD2 standard. And you also need to identify the percentage used in calculating taxable benefit for company car. And they have given you that it's a petrol car with 142 grams of CO2 emission. Okay. Now, first, let's calculate the percentage. Okay. If it is, it does not meet our D2 standard. Okay. Tell me, it's a petrol, not a diesel. Okay, so for petrol, whether it's meet, for petrol, the rule is not whether it meets RDE2 emission or not. It's only for diesel. For petrol, it does not meet RDE2 standard. Okay, it's always for petrol like that. So what is the start percentage? And if you see, it's 140, more than 55. So you have to do a working. What is the percentage? You have to remember the table. It starts with 16%, not 19. 19 is for diesel, meeting RD2 standard. So 16 is the starting rate. With this, you have to add anything above 55. So 140 minus 55, the difference. And you need to divide this by 5. This is the method of doing it, always. Anything additional above 55 takes that emission minus 55 and always divide by 5 because they told that one percentage for five okay full five it needs to be full five this thing for each five grams additional one percent they will charge so this adds up to how much Seventeen. It is seventeen percent. And if you add sixteen and seventeen, it is thirty-three percent. You need to add with sixteen all the time. Okay, so it's thirty-three. Can it be thirty-three? Why not? What is the maximum percentage? Thirty-seven. It's less than thirty-seven, so it is thirty-three. But we have to see under A and B how much it will be. Okay, if it does not meet RD2 standard. Okay. Then how much? You have to add 4% with it. Remember, here it was 15, here it was 19, here it was 16, here it was 20. 4% additional. So you have to add car does not meet rd2 standard you have to add 4% so 33 plus 4 is 37 and this is the maximum and if it meets the r2 standard it will be 33 only 
okay because it would be same as a petrol car now so when you're explaining you might be thinking when they say explain the difference what am i going to write because no theory was explained you calculate and then you explain through a number okay and one more thing i need to highlight here is let's say your co2 emission here is 140 perfect because if it's 140 140 minus 55 is 85 85 divided by 5 you will strictly get 17 no any percentage but let's say this number is 139 rather than 140 let's say it's 139 then how can you take 139 minus 55 no why because when you take 139 minus 55 it will be something uh, 4 and 84 right so 84 divided by 5 you will not get a whole number in fact you cannot even divide by 5 because 84 is not divisible by 5 you should always take a number which is divisible by 5 so if it's not 139 then what should you do you should bring down 139 to 135 so rather than writing 139 you will write 135 assuming this is 139 okay don't say why is 140 here's 140 no problem if this was 139 question which in your exam you can expect to get because real exam is always more tricky trickier so 135 you will round down this 139 to 135 minus 55 because this is divisible by 5 the next lowest number when you take 139 is 135 only which you can divide by 5 see whether something is divisible by 5 or not so 135 okay you should round down to the nearest full number divisible by 5 that is the rule round down not up don't take 140 or 145 round down to the nearest full number divisible by 5 so 135 you don't have to minus by 55 and see 135 itself is divisible by 5 anything with 5 or ending with 0 you can divide by 5 it's divisible by 5 okay that's the rule going to test your understanding 4 now you have been given 3 co2 emissions 132 187 62 and 53 now you need to calculate the percentage assuming the car runs on petrol or diesel which does not meet rd2 standard okay remember always there is a 4% supplement for the diesel that does not mean rd2 standard okay so quickly we'll do that okay let's take for 132 first okay so the question says petrol or is a diesel car which does not meet the r d e2 standard so we'll take for both petrol diesel okay now for 132 right basic is 16 here is 20 so because it's 132 you will not take 132 you will take 130 round down to the nearest number that is divisible by 5 130 minus 55 always minus 55 because above 55 only divide by 5 divide by 5 how much 15 percent here also 15 only so if you add this is 31 this is 35 this also you can take this also you can take because below 37 coming to next one 187 i will do this side so it's 187 okay here also with 16 petrol diesel 20 okay so what was the number 187 
if you round down to the nearest 5, it will be 185. 185 minus 55 divided by 5. How much? 26. Here also it will be 26 only. Let's check. 42, 46. Can you take 42, 46? No. It needs to be restricted to 37. Here also it needs to be restricted down to 37. What if it's 62? C is 62. At 62, it will be 60 minus 55 divided by 5. It is 1. So 16, 20, 1, 1. No problem. 17 and 21. No issue. And the fourth one, 53. This is a trick, tricky. You can't do 53 minus 55. It's less than 55. It falls in 51 to 54 gram category. Wait. 51 to 54 gram category. What is the rate? What is the percentage? 15. If it's petrol, 19 for diesel. Not meeting R D to standard. These are very easy questions. In your exam, you will not get this easy questions. This is just for your understanding. How well you have understood the concept that I've just explained to you. How did you apply to the question? That's what you have to test yourself. Now, there are five scenarios given to you. One, two, three, four, five. You need to calculate the car benefit taxable on each of the above employees. So, employees are different. Five employees. Okay. Regarding company cars. So, let's quickly do that. Now. So, first one is Marwa. Second one is Betty. Third one is Francisco. Then we have Derek. Then we have Asia. Okay. Here he is given a diesel car meeting RD2 standard. On which date? 6th August 2022. Date is very important. You have to see whether it is available fully, half, or half, for how many months. Car had a list price of 13,500, but paid a discount of 12,500. Car has a CO2 emission of 107 above 55. Okay, so first we'll do for Marwa. Okay, they are not related to each other. So you can straight away do one. You don't have to read two, three, four, five, and then do because one is not related to two, two is not related to three. None of them are related to each other. First, you always need to decide whether uh, first part is related to second or third, like that. If it's not related, straight away read the first one and do the question. So we are going to do that. First, Marwa. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? Remember to decide the appropriate percentage. You have to first calculate. I mean, you need to calculate the percentage. And by the way, you are going to take what? This discount that has been paid or the list price? 13500 or 12500 First decide the list price. It is this you have to take, no matter whatever discount you paid, list price only 13500 On this, you will apply the percentage. Now, we'll calculate the percentage. It is 107, round down to the nearest 5, 105, minus 55, divide by 5. How much? 10. You have to add this with what? It's a petrol. It's a petrol or diesel? Diesel. Meeting RD2 standard. So, what is the starting rate? Meeting RD2 standard. 16. 16 is the standard. So, 16 plus 10 is 26. So, this is the percentage. You have to apply with 13500. So, we'll quickly do that. Okay, wait. Marva, I think I've written down here. Okay. Marva, first one. Okay, M. So, with 13500, we'll apply 26 percentage. We have just calculated. Always show this as working. That's why I put working one, which will be 3510. Now, you have to deduct it if it's unavailable. Okay. So, was it unavailable for any time of the period? Tell me. You have to see. Okay. Did? Okay. So, now. Was provided with the diesel on 6th of August. So, the car was available from the starting of the tax year. If you say April, May, 
june july for four months first four months of the tax year this car was not available so you have to deduct the four months okay april may june july so we'll do that okay so when you are taking this it's four months of three five ten which you have to deduct which is one one seventy which is two three forty this is the answer okay there is another way of doing this check for how many months the car is available instead if you want to get this answer straight away how list price is 13500 and this is 26 percent and just take it for eight months because it was available for eight months if you do it in this go also in one shot you will get 2340 this is also possible alternative method you should always know it saves time coming to do to betty same way for betty also you have to do the older thing is percentages might be different co2 emission will be different so here also is a diesel car and throughout the tax it was provided you don't have to apportion it it does not meet rd2 standard list price is 2400 co2 emission 137 so let's do that okay so we know that on 16400 for betty we have to apply the percentage but we have to calculate the percentage okay so we'll quickly do that remember it's a car not meeting uh, sorry meeting the r2 stand rt2 standard diesel starting date is 20 percent with 20 it was 137 so 135 minus 55 divided by 5 which is 16 if you add it becomes 36 less than 37 apply it 36 percentage okay so it is 5904 done francisco third one He was provided with a new petrol car throughout the tax year. So throughout means no need to apportion. Francisco was required to contribute this much towards the purchase cost. This time he did a contribution. Up to how much contribution you can reduce? Up to 5000. Okay. List price is 22600. C2 emission is 214. Francisco paid the company 1200. For the private use of the car. So this private use of the car 1200 and the 3000 towards the purchase cost are different two different things do not mix them up together okay now so let's quickly do that okay here there are two things one is the benefit the other one is payment for the use of the car which you have to deduct from the benefit so first we'll quickly take that okay remember this is a new petrol car Starting rate is 16 percent. Then what is the other thing? 214. So you will take 210 minus 55 divided by 5. The percentage is 31. If you add 31 with 16, it is 47, but you have to restrict down to 37. So 37 is the percentage. But remember the list price. Because you made a capital contribution, you can reduce your list price. Okay. What was your list price? 22,600. You made a contribution of 3,000. So 22,600 minus 3,000, it becomes 19,600. On this, you will apply 37%. Okay. So now 19,600 into 37%. This is working 4. And working 5, we have for payment. Less payment for use of that car. 37 of 19600 is 7252. How much did you pay for the benefit for the use of the car? Private use 1200. Because I told you always when employees contribute for the benefit, reduce it. So this contribution and that capital contribution of 3000 towards the cost of the car is different. Okay. 
now the fourth one direct hybrid electric car throughout the tax year list price 60000 co2 emission is 39 electric range is 41 okay paid for all road tax insurance maintenance which is 1600 okay here no change with the list price it remains 60000 but what would be the appropriate percentage here you have to take remember this is a different car co2 emission is 39 electric range is 41 which rate you need to remember that table 8 percent it is 8 percent if you go by the table so 8 percent only you will apply okay and it's 4800 it is based on the table this is a different table this is based on the electric car table okay electric range and all of the petrol diesel and that one now remember this benefit covers okay you don't have to take this separately this 1600 already it is taken in that benefit insurance maintenance and everything now fifth one asia electric company car zero emission list price is 17000 okay for zero for emissions with zero okay co2 emissions are zero which rate it's always two percent rate okay so you will apply two percent to seventeen thousand seventeen thousand into two percent which is 340 that's it now the last question for this test your understanding five calculate the taxable uh, benefit taxable for sui and prakash this part is for sui this is for prakash so first we'll finish with sui petrol car he is provided with diesel car emission 104 141 here 187 list price 16000 here the list price is 36000 she drove 3000 business miles and paid her employee 2000 in respect of the private use of the car here she drove 28000 and prakash contributed 6000 towards the cost of the car and it does not meet rd2 standard also so let's do that First, we'll calculate the percentages. Okay. So, starting, this is petrol 20%. With 20, you will add 141. So, 140. Okay. Minus 55 divided by 5, which is 17. I'm sorry, this is the starting is 16 is petrol. So 16 plus 17 is 33. So here, straight away with 16,000 list price. So 16,000 into 33%, which is 5 to 80. Then you deduct contribution because they made a contribution towards the private use of the car, which is 2,000. Taxable benefit is 3 to 80 for sewer. Now come into Prakash. Prakash list price is 36,000. Remember, from 36, you can deduct how much? Can you deduct 6,000? Because she, he contributed 6,000? No, there is a limit maximum 5000 so it would be 36 minus 5 so 31000 is the list price and starting percentage here because it's diesel 
uh, does not meet RD2, so starting is 20%, and 185. Wait a minute, 187. it's 187 emission, so 185 minus 55 divided by 5, which is 26. Okay, if you add it, becomes 40, but it needs to be restricted to be 37%. So here, with 31, you are taking 37%. 11,470. That's it. So now we are moving towards private fuel, and this benefit is little different compared to other all the benefit because of the restriction when it comes to employee contribution. So in addition to your company car you will be also be given private fuel okay some employees pay all of the private fuel or part of it for their private mileage paid for the employer now you need to separate this from the car when you are calculating okay so here the benefit where fuel is provided has to become has to be for the reason of employment you just cannot give private fuel and say that you will claim benefit no And it is also based when you're taking the appropriate percentage for fuel, also based on the CO2 emission of the car only, because in the car only you need a fuel. So, fuel benefit is like this base figure into appropriate percentage. And this appropriate percentage is the same as that you have used for the car. The way you calculate is also same. That means once you have taken for the car, you don't have to second time calculate percentage again for the private fuel. This waste time. Okay. And the base figure is fixed. For private fuel and for this year it is 25,300. So with 25,300 always apply the percentage that you have got for the car. Make sense? Now, CO2 percentage used in the calculation of the car is the same as the fuel benefit. So here percentage will range from 2 to 37. Max 37 for car, here also max 37. Starting is 2%, here also 2%. Now, in terms of electric or hybrid electric car, there is no benefit. You are not going to get any private fuel benefit for this. They are only car benefit. Okay, Fuel benefit is only for the car with CO2 emission, petrol and diesel car. Now, the fuel benefit only applies to vehicles for which there is a car benefit charge. If you are using some vehicle where there is no car benefit, you are not going to get fuel benefit also. In that car fuel benefit you will only get on those car where car benefit is given in that car so with the car fuel comes if no car no fuel okay and for pool cars you cannot charge private fuel benefit it does not come because pool cars are used by all the employees so for pool cars there is no private fuel benefit okay or even an employee's own car you cannot use private fuel i mean fuel benefit there it needs to be a company's car given to employee for the purpose of work even employees own car will not apply for this now there is no reduction is made to the fuel benefit for payments made by the employee even if employee contributes partially you can't deduct it from the benefit okay the rule is either employee needs to pay entirely for the fuel all the cost or nothing at all so even if they partially pay no benefit to the employee you can't reduce the partial benefit so it's a zero or all okay so if let's say employee pays fully for the private fuel in that sense there will be no fuel benefit no fuel benefit everything is reduced whatever the benefit is there employee pay deduct becomes zero so no fuel benefit no tax you have to charge Alas. But this is the exception that private fuel has that is not there for the other benefits. Other benefits, whatever the amount you pay, employee, of course, with some maximum limit, you can reduce. Private fuel, all or nothing. Now, what if the fuel is provided for the part of the tax here? Okay, it is not possible to opt in and out of the fuel benefit charge. You can't keep on going in and out. This month you are taking fuel benefit, next month you are not taking fuel benefit charge. You can't go like that okay for example let's say from 6th april because tax year starts from 6th april 
6th April to 30th September, let's say, there is a fuel benefit. That means you will only be charged for 6 months. Why? After that, permanently, it has been seized. No fuel. Let's say from 6th to 30th September you are using, but again you are using it from 1st of Jan to 5th April. Then you cannot seize the fuel benefit because it is only temporary. You can't seize it uh, from 30th September and say that again in 1st January I will take the fuel. No. Fuel will be there. So temporary seization of fuel? No. Permanently if you are seizing it? Yes. Like in the above one. Okay. So you can't reduce the fuel benefit like that based on some three months or four months number of months if you're permanently not charging the fuel any longer then you can yes reduce it otherwise no coming to vans with cars fuel comes van here little rules are little different from the car not so much okay here they are giving a flat rate scale charge which is for this year 3600 you need to remember this now okay for van figure is the taxable benefit is 3600 per annum yearly vans producing zero c2 emission will have a zero benefit charge okay and no benefit arises where the private use of van is insignificant okay and remember when you're determining the private use journeys between home and work are ignored okay but with the car this is not the case that's why you need to know the rules of the car very well to apply it for the van also. Because you don't know what to ignore and what to take. When you're taking the private use, okay, journeys between work, home and work are not ignored in the car. You have to take that also. Okay. Here it is ignored in van. In car it is not ignored. And proportionate reductions are made when the van is unavailable use the same definition for unavailable as for cars what is it 30 days consecutive it needs to be unavailable same for vans so accordingly you will reduce it based on the number of months now if employees share the private use of the van like how they have done for car then what then the scale charge will be divided between the employees on just and a reasonable basis let's say if there are five employees, we'll see how the five employees have used that van privately based on their private use of each employee, you will be charged. So that flat scale charge divided among the five employees. If it's 10, then 10. Okay. I mean, sorry, it's not based on the employee, but reference will be amount of the private use. Now, in addition to van, there is a taxable benefit of 688. This is for van fuel. Okay. For car, we have a separate fuel. For van, it's fixed 688. There is no fuel benefit for a company van which produces zero to emission. Okay. It's a zero emission van. So now, before we move on to the beneficial loan, let us do questions on the van and the private fuel. So we are going to use three questions, illustration eight, test to understanding six, and test to understanding seven. Here, illustration eight is same like illustration seven, where we have four employees, uh, five, Marwa, Betty, Francisco, Derek, and Asia. This time it is for fuel, fuel benefit. So Marwa has been given the fuel benefit from 6th August to 5th April, Betty, from 6th to 31st, Francisco from 6th to 5th April, that means there is no partial entirely it has been given and he has paid 600 towards the cost of the private view, although the actual cost was 1000. Derek was provided with fuel for private use for throughout the tax year. Asha was not even provided with the fuel. Okay. So now let's quickly do for this five employees. Mawa, Tell me what is the percentage. The percentage that you have used in illustration 7 will be same. So I'm not going to do it again. I'm just, just going to carry it forward. Okay. What is the base figure? 25,300 is the base figure. With that, you will apply the percentage that is used for Marwa. 
we have calculated before in illustration 7 which is 26 percent which is 6 5 7 8 now if it's not available it has not been available for the entire year you have to reduce it for how many months four months okay Six five seven, which is two one nine. Sorry, two. Okay, wait. Mm, it's two one nine three. Two one nine three. Deduct, and it becomes four three eight five. Now we'll be going to betting. Okay. Betty also is the same. 25,300 is the base figure. And the percentage we got for Betty was 36%, which is 9108. Deduct. It has been not available for three months. Okay. January, February, March of 2023. So three months it was not available. So three months of 9108 you have to deduct. Okay. Which is double two double seven. It is six eight three one. Coming to Francisco. F twenty five three hundred into thirty seven nine three six one. That's it. What about the contribution that you have made? He has made six hundred out of thousand. Can we deduct it? No, we can't because either he has to pay the one thousand or no. There is no partial contribution from employee that you can reduce for fuel only. So we are leaving that part. Now coming to Derek. Okay. 25, for Derek, it is 25,300. It's the base figure into what percentage? 8%. Because that's the percentage we have got earlier. So it's 2024. For Asia, no fuel. So we are not going to calculate. Test your understanding 6. Okay. You need to calculate the taxable benefit what is private use of the car. Now, so we'll quickly do that. Okay. Remember, you need to calculate two things here car benefit as well as fuel benefit. In fact, car benefit needs to be calculated first before you calculate fuel benefit. Why? You need the percentage. You need the appropriate percentage for fuel that you have used for car. So always start with the car benefit first. Okay. Now, what is the, it's a petrol. List price is 24,000. CO2 emission is 160. Okay. And from 1st of July, 2022. Now, Charles made 100 per month for the car and 50 per month for the petrol. Okay. You have to calculate from 1st of July to 5th April 2023. You have to calculate for how many months. Then there are some other expenses, servicing, insuring, fuel and maintenance. Now, so list price, okay. List price of Charles is 24,000. What percentage you will apply? There's a separate working for it. Okay. Emission is 160. So because there's 160, you don't have to round up or down. It is divisible by 5. So 160 divided by minus 55 divided by 5. Okay. Which is 21. This you will apply with what percent? It's a petrol. Okay. And uh, they didn't say anything about automation. So the default position is 16 percent. It's petrol, so it will be 16 percent only. Only for diesel, we have to see. Okay. 
but that is 19 or 20 watt petrol starting 16 percent so it would be it would be 37 percent maximum is also 37 percent so we are going to apply 37 percent here but we can only take for the months that they have used july august so it's on july july august september october november december january february march <coughs> but he took the delivery of the car on first august 2022 so from august if you take till march it's eight months okay it's eight months so here only for eight months which will be 5 9 20 then employee contribution you have to deduct because this is car that's why employee contribution you can deduct it's only for fuel how many months 100 into 8 for car it's 100 so it is 800 which becomes 5 1 2 0 now you have to add fuel benefit this is car benefit car for fuel okay what is the base figure 25300 multiply by what percentage we have already done it 37 because here we have used 37 and for 8 months which is 6241 he also paid 50, 50 into 8 if you take how much? 400. And if you see fuel 3500, he didn't pay entirely. So you can't reduce the partial contribution to fuel. So it's 6241, you will add with this total benefit would be 11361. You have to explain all this. That car is available for this one. Fuel also will be taken as the same percentage. Child cannot deduct 50 per month because they did not pay for the fuel entirely. You have to write all this under the notes. Now, test your understanding 7. And remember, all these things, expenses are already there in the benefit. You don't have to deduct it. Test understanding 7. Taxable earnings. Okay. Taxable earnings means he will have benefit as well as cash. So here, salary is 60,000 per annum from 1st November 2022. Company gave him a car. List price was 15,000. Emission rate was 119. Up to 5th she drove 6,000 miles of which 4,500 were for private purpose. Company paid for all running expenses. Between 1st of November to 31st Jan, company made paid for petrol usage. Geeta made a contribution to employer of 15 per month towards the cost of the petrol for her private use. From 1st of February 2023, her employer only paid for business use petrol. Remember, this has a lot of things. Salary, petrol and fuel. Uh, and the car, sorry. So, salary plus car benefit plus fuel benefit. So, first we will take salary. Okay. Salary would be 60,000 how many months august september october november december january february march eight months Forty thousand. then we have car benefit car benefit how much fifteen thousand because that's the list price okay and percentage you have to apply we'll go for working and do the percentage it's 119 you can't take it's not divisible by 5 so 115 round down to nearest number that is divisible by 5 so 115 minus 55 divided by 5 is equals to 12 this you need to add with 16 because it's petrol another thing is diesel it's petrol which is 28 percent so here 28 percent how many months the car was given to you when from 1st of November, November, December, January, February, March, 5 months. So into 5 months, which is 1750. Then we have fuel benefit. 
which is base figure 25 300 same percentage as car 28 percentage and for how many fuel is for three months first of november 231st january december january three months 1771 if you add three it is 43 521 this is the taxable earnings okay and since for the fuel they have not reimbursed in full you can't deduct any contribution of fuel so now we are going to start with the beneficial loan as the word says beneficial this loan is beneficial okay here we need our interest rate because in loans there is an interest rate that is charged right so for this tax here the interest rate official interest rate is two percent you need to remember it okay now if ever employees are given a beneficial loan by their employer it's a benefit that is chargeable this is how you do it okay interest that will be payable on the loan that means interest had interest being charged at the official rate less interest actually paid in the tax year the difference is your taxable benefit because at the official rate okay what is the official rate two percent if interest was charged at the official rate interest would be something else minus the amount of interest that you are paying what is it at two percent difference is taxable benefit now you need to remember there are two methods of calculating taxable benefit okay when it comes to beneficial loan one is known as precise the other one is known as average method or simple method because this method is simple okay here we use the average balances of the loan that is outstanding during the tax year you take the outstanding balance at the start of the tax year plus at the end of the tax year divide by two okay and if the loan was taken out or repaid during the tax year you use that date instead of beginning or end of the tax year you use that date and the resulting taxable benefit is time apportioned based on number of months that loan was available like how we have done for car benefit now second is the precise method or you can say accurate method this calculates your interest on day to day basis okay now in your exam calculations are done on a monthly basis so either hmrc or the taxpayer can decide to use the precise method now when you are told to calculate the taxable benefit for beneficial loan you have to use both the method precise and average unless in the question they tell you that use this method only and there is an exemption that applies here if employees are given small loan okay then there's an exemption what is it that means where the total of all the employees whether it is cheap cheap means less than the official interest rate or interest free loan no no interest at all zero percent interest rate okay then there is for example small loan means any loan if you aggregate all the loans given to employees together and in the tax year it should be less than 10000 if it goes more than 10000 it does not come under it's not qualifiable for the you can't qualify for this exemption so your total accumulated loan amount during the tax year at any point needs to be below 10000 okay then you can apply saying that it comes under small loan but remember loans which qualify for tax relief are excluded from this loan okay this beneficial loan and loans which qualify for tax relief are two separate things you can't mix them together we'll see which loans qualify for tax relief in that case because you are exempted no benefit will arise if you are given let's say a beneficial loan of 5000 no benefit will arise no tax because less than 10000 and it's just not for one employee 10,000 another 10, no together if you add all the employees 
let's say you are giving 1000 to one employee another 1000 to one employee like this let's say 1000 you are given to each employee how many employees you can give up to before it makes 10000 10 employees that means you can only give up to 9 employees having 9000 because if you give 10 it becomes 10000 then it becomes it does not fall under the small loan therefore you cannot claim for exemption if it exists 10000 okay now if let's say an interest free or a cheap loan is used by that employee for a qualifying purpose then you can get a relief relief on that interest paid what is that qualifying purpose we earlier went through this what is the qualifying purpose i think in my lecture two or three one of the qualifying reason was when you take a loan to buy plant or machinery that is used wholly for the employment that's a qualifying purpose because for your employment purpose if it was for personal purpose you are taking loan it does not come under qualifying purpose okay so here if it comes under qualifying no benefit and if all or part of the loan to an employee is written off it does not matter whether it's a low interest or interest free loan whatever it is if it's written off the amount written off is treated as taxable benefit and is charged to income tax you need to remember this rules now there are exemptions for commercial loans okay for example any loan that is made to employees on commercial terms there are it's different from benefit beneficial loan means where you are charging a lower interest rate than the commercial rate of interest it is not the same interest rate that is charged in the market you are paying much lower than that that's why the loan is beneficial for employees so this exemption applies where loans are made by an employer whose business is only into lending money for example bank if bank is lending money okay it is not a beneficial loan it is a commercial loan because the terms and conditions of the bank is same for any employee okay so for that there are some exemptions that applies then same terms and conditions to all employees the loan has been made okay and a substantial number of loans on this terms are made to the public customer these three things are there there are exemptions now let's do questions on beneficial loan before we move on to the next benefit illustration 9 and test understanding 8 okay here you have to do both the average and precise method so daniel was given a loan of 35000 okay on 31st march 2022 to help finance help finance the purchase of a yacht the reason why they tell you the reason of finance is to know whether it's a qualifying or not a qualifying purpose okay interest is at one person on 1st of June, Daniel repaid 5,000 and on 1st December, he repaid a further 15,000. Remaining 15 still remain outstanding on 5th April 2023. Now, calculate both the methods. Test to understanding 8 also. There is a loan which is interest free and he repaid 4,000. Okay. By his employer 6th April 2021 and it he repaid out of 15 4000 so now let's do the average method average means opening outstanding class closing divide by 2 into the official rate of interest so first let's do the average method A average. What is the opening? You took a loan of 35,000. Outstanding of opening outstanding plus the closing. How much? They told remaining 15,000 still outstanding. So closing is 15,000. divided by 2 what is the official rate of interest 2% it is 500 now less interest that has been paid so 
So tell me, first interest was paid from which date? First of June. Okay. So it will run from 6th of April 2022 to 1st of June 2022. That means 31st uh, May. So 6th April 2022 till 31st May 2022. How many months? April, May, two months. 35,000, right? Interest paid on which amount? 35,000. On 35,000. What is the interest rate which uh, they have taken in interest at 1%? Loan of with the interest of 1% into two months, which is 58. We need to deduct. Then the next one is from 1st of June 2022 to till which date? 1st December, that means 30th November 2020. The end date. How many months? See, you have repaid on 1st of June 5000. So from 35, 5000 goes, you are left with 30,000. On this, you are taking 1%. For how many months? June to November. 6 months. June, July, August, September, October, November. How much 150 the next one the last payment 1st of December until 5th April so 1st of December 2022 to 5th April 2023 how many months and from 30 you paid 15 so you are left with 15,000 into 1% into 4 months December, January, February, March, which is 50. So you are left with 242. This is the taxable benefit under the average method. Now we'll see under the precise method, how much will be the interest. Okay, it's daily. So it is 6 April 2022 till 31st May 2022. Okay, 35,000. On this 35,000, what rate? Official rate 2% into 2 months. This date and all you have to take from here, okay? So it's 170. See here, interest paid you took like this 500, okay? But one thing is there your interest paid will be total of this only, interest paid will be same. The um, different comes here, this section. How we are doing under average and precise method that is the only difference this the interest paid part is same here if you add the total will be 258 because 500 minus 258 only is 242 so 258 also will be the interest paid under precise method also okay now from wait 1st of june 2022 to 30th November 22. What rate? 35,000 because you paid 5,000. So for at 2% official rate, 6 months. Remember, precise is a daily interest. And 1st of December 2022 to 5th April 2023. With 15,000 into 2% into 4 months, which is 100. If you add is 517, whereas under average method, you got 500. more or less it will be same in that range only. 
So here interest paid is 258, here also is 258, same as above, no difference there. Then you will get 259 as your taxable benefit. See the difference. Here is 259, here is 242. Precise method gives you higher interest, higher taxable benefit. But difference is not so much. Okay, it's just a small difference. So tell me, in this situation, HMRC would opt for precise or average. It's highly that they will opt for precise method. Why? It is giving you the higher taxable benefit, which is good for HMRC compared to average. Average is giving 242 taxable benefit. Precise is giving 259. But if you see, difference is very small. It's not so significant. So HMRC might not look that so deeply. Now we are coming to test your understanding 8. Here, average method. They didn't tell you the method. That's why you need to do both the methods. Okay, A, average. So under average method, take the official interest rate 2% into, into what? 15,000 plus, he has repaid 4. So he'll be left with 11,000 divided by 2 which is 260 and he has not paid any interest because it's interest free. If it's interest free, interest paid would be at zero. So 260 is the benefit. Coming to the precise method. Here, from 6th April 2022 till, when is it? He repaid on 6th September. So it is 5th September 2022. If you take 15,000 into 2% into 5 months, 125. And then 6th of September 2022 until 5th April 2023, you repaid 4,000. So your outstanding is 11,000 into 2% into 7 months would be. 128 if you add the two it is 253 this time average method is giving higher method higher amount even here also difference is very small just the seven so it's not a big issue the last benefit of this lecture is assets provided to employees and after this, we are going to do tons of questions. And then finally, we are going to summarize the lecture. I know it's a big lecture, but what to do, there are lots of benefits. Anyways, coming to the lecture, private use of an asset by the employer. I mean, asset provided by the employer. Now, there are some general rule. When we started benefits, we told general rule of taxing benefit is cost of providing that benefit to the employee. Okay, the employee's cost of providing that benefit to the employee. Now, other than some specific assets like cars, vans, accommodation, we have earlier gone through this, right? Because these are also assets that you can give to an employee, like car, van, accommodation. But for them, we have specific rule. And we went through all these three. Okay. So, when it's an asset, Okay, and we are providing it for the first time. This is how you calculate the taxable benefit. 20% you take of the assets value when it is first time provided. And if the employer rents the asset to the employee, okay, instead of buying it, then employee is taxed on the higher of this. The rent paid by the employer or 20% of the market value. If it's given to the employee first time, 20% of the market value. If it's rented to the employee, higher of this two, rent paid by employer or 20% of market value. Now, there are some other assets also like mobile phone. Under exempt benefit, we went through that mobile phone. One mobile phone is exempted. But what if there is two mobile phones? 
one is exempted but the other one will be taxed okay now as i told this rule does not apply for car van or living accommodation we have already went through the special rule for this assets now when you are gifting an asset what happens situation changes if an employer purchases a new asset and then gives it to the employees immediately employee will be taxed on the cost to the employer okay but what if the gift was followed okay the private use followed by the gift of the asset that means first you have used it now you are gifting that asset so used asset that is being gifted you are not gifting it immediately then okay for example for those asset which has been first used by the employee then it has been given to the employee then the taxable benefit would be higher of market value when gifted okay and market value when first made available to employee minus all benefit taxed on the employee during the time employee had the use of it but did not own it because when they were using it okay they were charging some benefit right so when you give to them then you have to deduct this benefit from what from the market value of the asset when first made available to employee and compare this with market value when the asset was gifted compare the two of this whichever is higher will be the taxable benefit okay now why is it what is the purpose of doing this the purpose of this special rule for the gift of used assets the gift of a new asset and gift of a used asset is different the reason why this is is to prevent employees from gifting assets that depreciate in value very rap rapidly once they are used why because it's it, employees are the one who is going to gain for example they have used an asset okay earlier they have charged taxes because that time value was high but rapidly asset that asset is such that it depreciates in value very rapidly then by the time when th that is gifted to the employee because of that depreciation in the asset now employees is going to pay low tax no tax on it because on the lower value you know when it depreciates rapidly on the lower value of the asset you are gifting you are getting i mean paying the income tax so who is gaining employee is the one who is gaining in this that's why so the tax according to tax rules they don't want you to gain so much they are preventing the employees to gain from that difference that's why now where the asset let's say it's a used car earlier employee used it now employee is taking that car okay it is being given to the employee permanently or a van or a bicycle okay then remember above rules it does not do not apply because for cars for van we have separate rule so for them this rule will not apply higher of this then what happens then what applies it is always the market value at the date of the transfer if it's a used car used van or used bicycle remember that that bicycle also because uh, to provide journey to work this cars van and bicycle is only when journey to work when this is given i mean used car used van used bicycle given to employee to go from work to home place then it is always the market value at the date of transfer of this assets not the above rules so now we will do questions so now we are going to finish all the questions one after the other and then we'll summarize this lecture starting with illustration 10 use of assets here you need to calculate taxable benefit and what if the employer rents the computer for 200 so this is about a computer which costs 800 okay so it is just a normal asset and if it is gifted to an employee okay for use you have to take 20% of the cost of the asset 
so it's in a it is 20 percent of 800 which would be 160 160 is the taxable benefit okay now b what if it's a rent okay of 200 see you always have to choose the higher of 160 and 200 20 percent of the value of the asset and the rent higher of it so it would be 200 higher is 200 okay now illustration 11 use of the asset followed by a gift first you used it then you are gifting it in illustration 10 it was purely gift new gift now this is about a dishwasher okay benefit when you're gifting a dishwasher and what would be the accessible benefit if x had paid x limited if brand had paid x limited 100 for the dishwasher okay now so they purchased this on 1st of june 2021 okay 600 on this date excel give the dishwasher to brand at its market value at 150 so in a it's a gift of dishwasher you have to take the higher of do you no see i often tell things just in order to confuse it because i want to see your confidence okay you need to know this or that you can't say this or that may or maybe this or maybe that whenever you are in a situation like this in any paper just know that you are not fully prepared because if you are fully prepared for subjects like tax you can be very confident it's like it's like a yes or a no very clear you know it you know it you don't know the rules you don't know the rules it's not maybe this or that because these questions are not open-ended tax questions are very close-ended there's one accurate answer that's the best thing about tax and that makes tax easy to score also very high but that's also again another reason why students often don't do well also because there is no alternative way of gaining this mark compared to other questions other papers like audit or sbl or other paper where you can write a lot and if your writing is good sometimes you can you know sometimes write from some other areas and gain marks but tax is not like that it has to be that specific rule and sometimes it's very easy to get confused when everything comes together gift then uh, gifting a use asset gifting a new asset then if what if it's rented everything okay anyway so this is a dishwasher always whenever it's a gift see what type of asset it is nature of the asset is it a car is it a accommodation is it a van if it's not thank god okay because other assets are easier the 20 percent rule now market value when it was first available was 600 market value when first available now you have to deduct benefit that was already assessed because it's a use of asset followed by gift okay and it was in 2021 so already you have assessed the gift so it would be 600 into 20 percent into how many months check first of june to 6th april June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, nine months, ten months, sorry, ten months. It's hundred. So it's five hundred. Okay. And if you see the market value when it is gifted, okay, market value then being one fifty. And this is 500. You have to choose the higher of this two. So you have to choose 500. Okay. The market value when gifted versus this. Now, coming to part B. What would be the accessible if brand had paid X limited 100 for the dishwasher?
or you can say sale of dishwasher to brand 100 remember benefit would be as calculated above 500 less the price that has been paid how much 100 becomes 400 this is the taxable benefit now come into test understanding 9 okay here there is a suit costing 300 was purchased for Habiba used by her employee on 6 April 2021. On 6 August 2022, suit was purchased by Habiba for 14 when the market value was 30. Calculate the benefit accessible on Huba for each of the tax year, each of the tax year affected by the information above. Which tax years will get affected? Two tax years. One is 2021-22, the other one is 22-23. First, we'll do Whenever you are calculating tax of different tax years, always start with the oldest first. Okay. Then we'll go to the latest. It's not the other way around. You have to go in the chronological order. Okay. So here, what is it? Suit. Okay. So you have to take, when you are taking the, this one, you have to take the 20% of the value. 20% of 300. Since that was the cost would be would be 60 now for full tax year so it's 60 come into 2022-23 this tax year again the annual value how much 20 percent into 300 but not for the entire year how many months April, May, June, July. Four months. Four months. Which is 20. Okay. And when you are taking it, you have to take at the higher of what? You have to take the current market value okay you have to choose the higher up what is the current market value current market value is 30. okay you have to compare this with the next that is what is the original cost 300 right isn't it from this 300 whatever the benefits that you have already taken you have to deduct that was charged before so 2021-22 2022-23 here 60 was charged here 20 was charged sixty and twenty so when you're taking three hundred minus sixty minus twenty it becomes I'll write down 220. 220. And also any price paid by employee deduct. How much? They told 14. It was purchased for 14. So deduct that 14 also. Okay. But first choose the higher. Higher is 220. Not uh, not the 30. Okay. If you, you have to compare 30 with this. Current market value with this. So 220 is higher. So we are going to take 220. Okay. Because higher up of above is 220. So with this 220, now you deduct the price 14, which is 206. So this 206, okay, you have to add with this 20. Which becomes 226. This is how you take the taxable benefit. Okay. So now we are moving on to questions like 
it is comprehensive examples comprehensive examples because this question includes the entire lecture all the benefits okay it could be car accommodation expenses with accommodation fuel used uh, gift of used assets new asset all the benefits that you have won through now we are going to go through those questions so let's do that illustration 12 so we have illustration 12 test to understanding 10 and test to understanding 11 as comprehensive after that from test to understanding 12 to till test to understanding 18 i opt practice objective test questions where you have to select four out of the correct answer so this will finish first the three major questions which requires a lot of working okay this is covering employee benefits darcy Okay. So Darcy is given an employment salary of 36,000. Also bonuses based on the company's performance. Okay. Bonuses are normally determined on 31st May. So these are the bonuses. Okay. To 2020, 21, 22, 4,000, 8,000, and 4,000. Now he has made the use of company car. List prices twenty thousand. See, you have to do when you are attempting tax questions. Okay, since you have learned so many benefits, all the rules are different. So many exempt benefits. What you will do is first time when you are doing question, you will do one question. Like for example, today you want to do car. Do all the questions on car. Then, if you want to do an accommodation, do all the questions on accommodation. Then, finally, once you are a pro, once you have understood that you have understood each benefit individually very well, combine all the benefits. Pick a question where all the benefits are together in one question. Big major question covering the benefits. This is how you test yourself, and this is how you increase your uh, level of difficulty also. From day one, if you start with a question where it has all the benefits you will get confused don't do that because students often do that they always want to jump to the highest level before doing the easy questions first which might be having one or two benefit so do that okay that way you have to do. okay so all this while we, the questions that we have been doing is specifically for that particular area the moment i finish accommodation i will do questions on accommodation. the moment i finish expenses with accommodation i did question now it's a question where everything is together what you have studied so you have to recall and even if you have forgot don't worry while you are practicing multiple times you can go and check the answer it's fine provided you attempt each time from your own before looking at those answers because each time you might be making different uh, mistakes sometimes you might forget the list price sometimes you might forget the employees contribution sometimes you might forget and take more than 37 percentage for car where is because they told the limit is 37 can happen it happens okay anyways coming back to the question so here company car list price is 20 okay running expenses including diesel is 2600 diesel does not meet rd2 standard co2 emission is 185 calculate the income tax liability straight away income tax liability why employee benefit employee salary self-employment income all these are chargeable to income tax we are in section b this is what you have to do every time you do recall and bring back where are we we are in section b of the taxation syllabus income tax all these benefits all this salary all these bonuses at the end of the day are charged income tax and they fall under what non-savings non-savings okay now briefly give reasons okay whenever they tell you you have to give reason if they don't tell just calculate briefly give reasons for your treatment of items included or excluded why you excluded why you included okay 
So let's do that. It will take a little bit of time. Initially, when you solve a question like this, but initially it will take more time. Then try to do a similar question with time. More and more you do, less and less time you will take. That is the purpose of it. You doing a question multiple times or on the same area does not mean uh, you will be perfect or you will not make any mistake. No, even if you do uh, 100 questions, all the 100 times you will make mistakes in different, different ways. In 100 ways, you will make mistakes. That is not the purpose. Purpose is not, not to make mistake. Purpose is to be faster and to be more confident when you are doing questions. Okay. To be able to deal with that questions under the time condition. Now, salary is 36,000. No problem. For bonus, what are we taking? Tell me. See, bonus 36,000. So, we'll. Okay, when you are given like this together, salary is given, bonus is given, company card is given. Three things is there. If you see, break down this into three. Salary, bonus, company car. How are you going to deal? Salary and bonus are cash, com company this, car, this is benefit. And we know the rules of it. Always start with the salary, then bonus, then all the benefits. There could be five, six benefits. In this question, it's just one. Okay. And each benefit will be done separately. Car separately, with that fuel also separately. Okay, with car comes fuel. They will not tell you fuel is given. You have to calculate the fuel. Okay. So if you go like that, then there are four actually fuel also. Okay, so we'll do that. We are going to put this as a taxable income. Okay. First is salary. Nothing to do with salary. Take 36,000 as it is. Then we'll add bonus. Under bonus, we'll add a note because they told to explain. So whenever you have to explain, make sure that you may write like this bonus and note. Don't explain in that main table. Explain somewhere else. Okay. What is it? Tell me for bonus. There is a rule for bonus. Which one are you taking? 4,000, 8,000, 4,000. Which one? For bonus. When are you receiving? It is for 31st May every time. Okay. Bonuses are normally determined, paid. On 31st May. Remember, you have to go back and check for the director. Who this is who? For director, for director, there was a rule. What is it? It's on the receipt basis. And they told earlier of the four dates. If you can go and recall back. So it was determined when? 31st May. So 31st May 2002 falls when? I mean, when it will be determined? Bonus is determined in May 2022. Okay. It's taxable in the tax year 2022-23. So, under the receipt basis, okay, the receipt basis, it's a receipt basis. Under the receipt basis, directors for the bonus is treated as received, okay. The day when you determine, it is treated as that, that day itself, you have received it and you will be taxed on it, the bonuses. Okay. So, for example, if you check, even though this is 31st December 2021, 8000. Okay. This will be determined as paid on 31st May 2022. 
because it's determined on me in mails. Okay. And the bonus are normally determined and paid on 31st May thereafter. Thereafter means after the year end. So this will be this 8000 will fall in 31st May 2022, which is assessed in this tax year. If you take this one, looks like that this will be in this year. No, this will be determined when this will be determined 31st May 2023. It does not fall in this tax year. You are asked for this tax year. This will fall in 2023-24 not of our concern it is not received it will be receivable so we are following the receipt basis so that's why we are taking this 8000 i know for most of you when you do this this will be the confusion area only this thing others you can straight away do with the rules okay so it's the 8000 that you have to take and add with what your salary Okay, now what's next? Car benefit. Car, what is the list price of car? 20,000, no issue, but you have to get a percentage. Okay, so that will do. And it is 185, you don't have to round down. Straight away, you can take 185. So you are taking 185 minus 55 divided by 5, which is equals to 26. You have to add this with what percentage? What is the basic diesel car? It's a diesel car, by the way. It does not meet RED2 standard. So the basic rate is 20. 20 plus 26 is 46. Can we take 46%? No. Maximum is 37. So 37% you have to take with the list price. That is 20,000. 20,000 into 37% for car, 7,400. Fuel, what is the base figure? 25,300 always. Which percentage? 37 because for car also. You have to explain it. See, explanation part, I'm leaving it up to you. You will be able to do it. This is 9361. And when you add, your total income will be 6761. This is your total income. You need to remember lecture 2 and 3 for this. I think lecture 3 onwards. And from here, wait, let me reduce this. From here, what do you have to do? See? We have been learning benefits so much. Now you forgot the old. From total income, what do we deduct? Personal allowance. Your lecture 2, lecture 3, you can't forget. How much? 12,570. Often students forget to deduct this. And straight away applying income tax on the total income. 48,191. Taxable income. taxable income is it over no you have to calculate your tax he's a higher a taxpayer basic rate 37700 is at 20 percent this is a non-saving by the way 7540 excess that is 10491 this is not a saving this is not a dividend no dividend in red band no savings in red band no saving starting rate straight away apply basic and higher because non-saving non-saving is the easiest one to deal with trust me if you get everything non-saving you're very lucky but unfortunately in your exam i mean not unfortunately but uh, you have all the three types of income okay you will not be given only non-saving that's why be very careful so 40 percent okay add 11 7 3 6 this is your income tax now, the next question. Test understanding 10. You have been given 5 benefits. 5 benefits. 5 different types of benefits, in fact. And you have been told, assuming Lily, 
made the most tax efficient choice in respect of the lunch facility calculate the total value for taxation purpose of the benefits she have received We'll do one by one, starting with the first one. Diesel car, meeting IEDU the standard. From 6th October, list price 20,000 COD emission 149. Company paid all running expenses, including private diesel. Okay, so first we'll do one by one. First, in this, two benefits will come, car and fuel. Okay. Car and fuel. Wait, I'll keep a list and I will do the workings here so that it's easier for you. Okay. What is the what is the CO2 emission? 149. Can we take 149? No, round down to a number divisible by 5, 145. So 145 minus 55 divided by 5 is equals to 18 18 plus what it is diesel meeting re due to standard right so the starting uh, the you have to add it with 16 percent 18 plus 16 34 you can take 34 percentage okay and this 34 you multiplied with the list price list price is 20,000 Which is six thousand eight hundred. You have to see for the number of months it was available. Okay, I think it was available for six months. It was available from six October, November, October, November, December, January, February, March. Six months. Okay. So it was available for six months only, which is 3,400. So straight away, I'll go here and write 3,400. Same for fuel. This is car, fuel. For fuel, it's, fuel is very easy. Base figure is 25,300. Apply same percentage 34 and 6 months, which is 4301. So, right here, 4301. What's the next? You have to read the second one. She continued to have the use of stereo system owned by the company, which cost 2000. Two years ago and which is kept at her home okay she used to use now she is keeping it also that means it's a gift okay followed by the use so now how should you account for it studio system is easy just take 20 percent of 2000 So 20% of 2,000, 400. No working cut for stereo. Now, this is over, this is over, this is over. Now, oh sorry, third one is not over. Barkey Peak has provided Lily with a television for her personal use since 6 April, when it cost 1,200. On 6 April, television was sold to Lily for 225 and its market value was 375. This requires working. Third one is a television. Okay. So we'll see the work. Here, you have to choose. Okay. Higher off. So television higher of twenty 
original cost less benefit original cost less benefits for use of television so originally it was 1200 and we have to see the benefit that is charged okay 1200 minus what is the benefit that was charged for tv you have to take 20% on the cost so 20% of 1200 is what 240 240 and it was 20 now it's 22 so since 2 years you have been charging benefits so 240 240 you have to deduct 2 times 240 you have to deduct which is 720 second one is current market value how much 375 which one is higher this one 720 so original cost less benefit assist the first one we are taking which is 720 from here less any amount paid to employer that means employees contribution will be deducted how much Two twenty five. Okay, it has been sold at two twenty five. We'll deduct from here, which is four ninety five. Four ninety five is the taxable benefit. Okay, so here you will take four ninety five. Now, next one is beneficial loan. Is the next one the fourth one interest free loan of 30,000 first gen she repaid 10,000 on 30th June the loan is not used for qualifying purpose okay so we'll quickly do that what should we do which method for beneficial loan both the methods because they didn't specify so first we'll use the average method okay always write the name of the benefits this is beneficial loan don't write all the benefits together and just put the number and add no one should know what working you are doing this is beneficial loan average method make sure you write the name of the method that you are using average method take the opening 30,000 if you repay 10,000, you will be left with 20,000. That is the closing outstanding balance. Divide by 2 into 2% 2 official interest rate, which is 500. Now, precise method. In precise method, you need the dates. And they told it's what? Tax, sorry, interest free okay so we don't know the interest rate that they have paid so no interest paid because it is interest free so for 30,000 20,000 this is at 2% both but for how many months You have to check now. 
you see it is for jan so for jan feb march three months okay i'm sorry uh she repaid the 10000 of the loan on 30th june april may and june so april you start from 6th april this is the date you have to calculate so april may and june three months okay you will be having 30000 for three months you have to take from the start of the tax year that is april may and june and here you will be having it for the nine months from july to march 150 and 300 which is 450 but when you have this type of question where you have to select only one how are you going to take the one which is the higher or the lower Lily has to choose. Lily is going to elect which one? Don't think about HMRC. Lily is going to choose this one, precise method, because it's low, not the high one. He definitely wants to pay low tax or 450. Okay. So, precise method is the one. So, that's why here we are going to put 450 under beneficial loan. Always choose the favorable one. Okay. Then, next one. Lily was provided with bouquet of flower on her 50th birthday, which cost the company 30. Tell me, it's less than 50. It's an exempt benefit. So, flower, you still have to write flower. And you have to write it zero. And you have to write the reason why it is zero. It comes under tribal benefit exemption because it's less than 50. Tribal benefit exemption. You have to use these words, okay? Tribal, don't just write exemption. Why it is exempted? Because it falls under tribal benefit exemption, less than 50. Then they told about something. In addition, she was offered a choice of lunch, one share of two per day for 200 working days, or a free meal worth three per day in the company's canteen for 200 working days. Meals are available free of charge to all the other employees. Okay, in respect of lunch, what would you do? Tell me. We'll do, we'll do a working for lunch. Okay, lunch voucher. So, how many days? 200 days into two it's 400 okay then two hundred days that is for canteen two hundred into three This is for lunch on one show. Okay. This is lunch facility and canteen 200 into 3 day. Remember, canteen is exempt. Canteen is exempt. You have to know this. So, because she has an option, remember this or this. Obviously, she will choose the exempt. Right? She will choose free meals in the canteen. She will choose canteen rather than choosing lounge voucher because lounge rent is costing her 400. Well, this is exempt because remember the question says she has an option offer. Choose this or this. She will choose the exempt. She will choose canteen because there she can get free meal rather than going for lounge voucher with 400 and pay tax. So, therefore, lunch facility is lunch is going to be zero as well. So now you need to add water. It is 9046. This is your taxable benefit. Okay. That's it. This is how you do it. 
it's a little bit lengthier and it took more time because you are doing it for the first time and, and I'm explaining you the reason also. Next time when I do a similar question with different number, you should be able to do it within uh, in less than 10 minutes, maybe six to seven minutes, okay? Or maybe let's say five minutes, okay? Now, test your understanding, 11. How do you manage these big questions? Often students ask me, ma'am, how do we manage such a big question? Because when we do practice, it's easy, but when it comes to the exam, we start panicking. How do we do that? So that's why, in order for you to not panic, okay, when you're reading, break down these pieces of information into small, small chunks. Rather than reading everything in one go, when you are reading, keep pause and highlight and underline the important area. For example, one para might be covering one specific point. One para might be giving just talking about car. The next one might be talking about, about accommodation. Third one might be talking about some other things, salary or anything. Okay. Because when you know one para is talking about one specific thing, then you know. Okay. It's always like this. Even though it looks a big, you see this test understanding level looks so big. But you don't have to read each and everything like word by word and all. Avoid that technique. But not first time when you're doing it, it comes with practice. First time you need to know like Basel is the managing director of this. You have to read all this. But while with practice, you will know what, which things falls in which place. You know, okay, first three lines are introduction. You know, okay, at the end I will get the tax rate. You know, okay, this is what it is. Okay, so now anyway, calculate her employment income, Basel's employment income. This itself shows you what she has been given lots of employment income, different types of income. Your job is to calculate. Now, as you can see, two things is already clear. One is salary, one is bonus. But you have to choose which salary, which bonus you have to take. And this is for a managing director. Okay, now. Performance bonus is determined and paid in July following the end of the accounting year. You have to know following the end of the accounting year. Now, Basel has the use of a Porsche car. List price is 34,000. CO2 emission is 202. Petrol expense paid by company. That means Basel did not pay anything. Thank God. 18,000 has been dropped and 10,000 were for private purpose. They reimburse company 50 as a contribution towards the cost of private petrol. Now, company house also, you see? So this para is about car and fuel. This one is about house. This one is about medical insurance. And this is about travel. In fact, if you see, ACC has a pattern. All the time they give you like this only. It's very easy. If you break down like this, it's very easy to read. But if you're not able to get this link, then you keep reading one by word, word by word. And you, by the time you go to the second, you forgot what is there in the first. If I highlight like this and keep, I know. Where is the house? House is third, second para. Where is the car first para? Where is the medical third para? Where is the travel last para? So now, since April, use of a company house annual value 1200 it's a rent free cost 90000 market value 135 pays remember whenever you are given uh, benefits like this some are exempt you will always be given some benefit which are exempt you have to identify from the list which is exempt for that you should know all your exempt benefit while you are studying tax okay you can't even miss one or two also while you are practicing. You can't say, uh, ask me, ma'am, which one is the important, which one should I ignore, which one should I study? Tell me only those exam benefits which will come for the exam. No one can tell you that. And it's so silly of you if you don't go through the entire list. Okay, so don't try to avoid it. Because sometimes you might be very unlucky, you might get from the list which you have not studied or prepared. And you don't even know whether it is taxable or exempt. So don't fall under that trap. Anyway. 
This is the last question. After that, we are going to do the pra uh, practice objective test questions like from test to understanding 12 onwards, which is going to be pretty easy. You just have to select the right one. So just concentrate here a little bit more. I know it's very uh, long this lecture, but nothing is in my hands. This chapter, this topic itself is very huge. So when you are studying this topic, you have to break down this in three, four days. You have to study this, finish this lecture. You won't be able to finish it in one go. Unless you are highly motivated and highly energetic, you know. Anyways, so coming to private medical insurance to all its employees. Bear share of the group premium was 320. In June, they needed to have treatment following a car accident. Cost of the insurance was 1720. Basel was reimbursed 1500 in respect of rail fares for business traveling in UK. Okay. When you're dealing also one by one, they are not related together, even though it's given to the same employee, same company, by the same company. When you're dealing the benefit, break down and then do. Medical insurance separate from rail fare. Rail fare separate from private petrol. Private petrol is separate from house. House is separate from car, like that. First, start with salary as I told you. Salary is the easiest thing. Okay. And you have to take the number of months also. So if you see here, which one are you taking? This one. Are we taking 2023? Do we need it for this tax year? 2022-23 tax year? Check the year end. It's 30th April. Do we? Yes, we definitely have to have link with this too. What about 2021? Do we have? No. Because our starting is 6th April 2022. So we're not having anything to do from 2021 onwards. Okay. Now, if you take this, because year end is 30th April, okay? It doesn't matter whether it is full 30 days or less than 30 days. If you check 6 and 30, it makes 24 days. Still, we'll take that April as one whole month. So, from here, 4, 3, 5, 60, we are only taking one month because this year end is 30th April. Starting is 6th April 2022. So, year end is so that whole month of April. One month only of this income will fall there. So, one month of 4, 3, 5, 60. Sometimes it happens due to the tax year and the year end if it falls in the date like this yes partly tax years from this year partly from the next year like in this question then 11 months you have to take from here the rest because one month is there so the balance 11 months of 44100 so if you add it is 44055 this is your salary this is the working working one for salary next bonus bonus which one 15000 it will be determined by year end is 30th april okay when is other bonuses determined july following the year of the accounting year end accounting year end is 30th april so it will be July, 20, 2000, 2022 July, the 15,000. It has been received. Now, benefits. Okay, under benefits also, you can write like this. So, first, car benefit fuel benefit, living accommodation, okay. 
okay then private medical insurance then we have reimburse business expenses don't write exempt or anything together if you add it's your employment income you have been asked employment income so quickly we'll do car benefit i'm going to do workings here itself very quickly without wasting more time this price is 34000 multiply by what is the percentage uh, it's 202 so 200 minus 55 divided by 5 add this with but 16 percent because it's petrol 45 you can take it to 37 so 37 on 34,000 okay which is 12 580 12,580. Fuel also same way. 37% into 25,300 base figure. 9,361. Okay. Now, living accommodation. You can do in that table itself or separately you can do. I prefer doing it separately. Annual value. What is the annual value? 1200. Then additional, uh, this is basic charge. Additional charge because more than 75,000. Additional charge, AC. What is the cost? 135,000 minus 75,000. Official rate is 2%. okay remember the reason why i've taken market value here and compared it with 75 why not 90000 check the date when it was acquired 14 and 22 if you compare it's more than 6 years the house was acquired by the employer that's why you have to take the market value 135000 not the 90000 so instead of the cost you are going to take market value and compare it with 75000 which is 1200 again so 2400 okay now private medical insurance will read no medical treatment cost remember it was covered by medical insurance okay so there is no taxable benefit for bus it is covered it is covered by the medical insurance not the employer when employer does not pay employee and it is paid by medical insurance no taxable benefit arises for the employee okay so how much basel's share of the group premium was 320 we are going to take the basel's share 320 we are not going to take the cost of the insurance company and all those things but 320 will take and add here then reimbursed expenses what about reimbursed expenses reimbursed business expenses are exempt it is exempt therefore zero okay we'll go through that again it was reimbursed 1000 in respect of rail fare for the business traveling it is exempt 
because it is purely business travel so entirely exempt so if you add all your employment income will be 83716 okay now that's it. We'll quickly finish the objective test and then we'll summarize this lecture. Test to understanding 12. Out of this, what is the employment income for this? Tell me. 45,000 is the salary. Okay. Out of this, what would be the bonus? 8. Or 11,000. It's 8,000. Look at the date. This one is date paid 1st June 2023. It does not even fall in the tax year 2022 23. So 8,000. So 45 plus 8 is how much? 53. 53,000. With this 53,000, you have to deduct this 2,000. Incurs expense in traveling to client's office, which are not reimbursed by her employer. So when you deduct this 2,000, it becomes 51,000. So correct answer is A. Okay. Why? Because this travel cost, you can deduct. Why? They were necessarily incurred in the performance of the duties of her employment. That's why you can deduct it. This expenses in traveling to client's office. That's why. If it was if it was not for the purpose, employment purpose, you can't deduct. Test understanding 13. Which is deductible from his employment income? Okay. Subscription to a local health club where he frequently meets client. Travel between two offices of his employer. He splits his time equally between the two center. Tip given to taxi drivers if you choose to take the taxi uh, home from work. Cost of the new suits bought to impress client. Correct answer is B. Because if you see the other ones are not incurred wholly, exclusively and necessarily for the purpose of employment. They have personal reasons also. Except B. Except B. So because when you are traveling between two places of work for the same employer, you are given a relief. It is for the purpose of work only. Test and understanding 14. You need to calculate the taxable benefit in respect of the computer. Okay. So here, 1st October 2022, market value 4,300, market value 5th April 2023 was 3,000. First take, first provided 4,300. Okay, take 20% of it. 20% of 4,300 for how many months it was taken in October? If you take from October to April, six months. October, November, December, January, February, March, six months. How much? 430. 430. So 430 is the answer. See. Taxable benefit. Now, test your understanding 15. Which one of the following is not an accessible as employment income? Okay, understand he is in the state agency. Medical insurance provided to a key member of staff. Free membership to the gym situated next to the company headquarters. A second mobile phone provided to the chief executive of the company and interest free loan of 6000 made on 6th April 2022. Which one? Correct answer is D. Why? You don't have to write this answer why. But if you understand why, that means it's good for you. Knowing the reason is also good. Even though you don't have to write because that means you are not memorizing anything. You have actually understood and choose that answer. Because all others are accessible as benefit. This is exempt. My dear students, this is exempt. It's less than 10,000. Others are taxable. 
okay if you are given for example here second mobile phone taxable only first one is not ex is exempt then free membership to the gym situated next to the company headquarter it is not exempt because it is not entirely for the purpose of the uh, employment and medical insurance will not be a benefit for you medical insurance provided to a key member of staff this is also for the purpose of employment okay now test your understanding 16 Carla was provided with a car okay in respect of car okay so here this is a diesel car does not meet list price 35 emission 131 contribution 1000 towards the purchase price that means list price is not provided with fuel for private purpose they have already given you not provide because remember when they say don't say anything about fuel when the question is silent on the fuel default position is fuel is there when they say something specifically that fuel is not provided then don't go and calculate fuel then fuel is not provided that means only car the reason why they told fuel is not provided because when a question if this line let's say this line is not given then this question is asked then you have to take fuel also fuel also add with the car and then it comes because that is also comes under the taxable benefit as car with the fuel but this is without fuel because they told so that's why now quickly we'll take 131 so 130 minus 55 divided by 5 this is equals to 50 this you have to add with 20 percent because diesel and does not mean i be reduced 35 percent it's less than 37 so 35 percent you have to apply on 35,000. not 35 you have to deduct this 1000 capital contribution from 35 so it becomes 34 you see the small small things students often forget so 11900 so the correct answer is b okay then test understanding 17 What is the taxable benefit assuming accommodation is not job related? First of all, understand if it is not job related, it is taxable. It is not exempt. The employer rented the house from a local landlord and paid rent of 32,000. Leo paid rent of 12,000 to his employer. The property had an annual value of 9,750. Higher of nine higher of rent and annual value. Annual value is 9,750. Rent paid by the employer, 32,000. Which one is the higher? 32,000 is the higher. Right? But remember, when employee is making any contribution, this 32,000 will be reduced. What is the employee contribution? 12,000, which is 20,000. So the correct answer is 20,000. Coming to 18, the last question. What is the taxable benefit in respect of the van? Immediately, some of you might look 3600 and 688 and think that this two are the answer. No, this is for fuel for van. Okay, and this 3600 per annum. No, we have to see. You have to read the information. So here, Mika drives the van to work and back each day but uses his own car for all other private journeys. The van has a list price of 20,000 and emission of 110. Tell me. What is the correct answer? This is little tricky. If you have understood, the correct answer is A. I know you must be very shocked to know why A. Because when okay, company van are provided 
journeys from home to work okay represent the only private use of the van by the employee in that condition there is no benefit so it will be zero okay that's all so let's summarize this entire lecture and i know it's a very big lecture but uh, what to do there are things and these are very technical things which you need to know because this later on is going to help you in advanced taxation if you're planning to take so now we have we have started with two types of benefits taxable benefit and exempt benefit first we'll finish the exam benefit before we move on to the taxable benefit you need to know this list so we went through gift any gift less than 50 exempt then employees contribution to pension exempt pension advice up to 150 subsidized canteen car parking space work work buses bicycles subsidies for public transport one mobile phone per employee if it's two additional will be taxed work related training sports and recreational facilities staff part is up to 150 per annum welfare counseling workplace nurses home worker expenses up to 6 per week or 26 per month job related accommodation relocation expenses up to 8000 overnight expense up to 5 per night in uk and 10 per night overseas employer liability insurance death in service benefits and phi beneficial loan totaling 10000 because if it's more than 10000 there are rules it's taxable medical treatment up to 500 per year then those were the exempt benefit then we moved on through the taxable benefit okay taxable benefit one is general rule that is the cost to the employer we look at the marginal cost next for certain benefits there are specific rules okay and always any employee contributions are always deducted except one benefit that is private fuel and if the benefit was not available for the entire tax year you have to apportion it based on the months specific valuation rule starting with gift of asset when you gifting an asset new asset when you are gifting it is always the cost to the employer that you have to take and when you are taking giving a gift okay gift of an asset which was earlier used then you have to take higher of market value when gifted versus market value when first available minus benefits already assessed now for number 2 beneficial loan official interest rate you need to know is 2% okay so interest at 2% less any interest paid two methods are there you need to know both the method and in your exam you need to calculate both the methods unless the question tells you specifically which method to apply so first one is average method this is the easy method you take the opening balance of the loan take the closing balance of the loan add both divide by 2 into 2% precise method this is a daily rate is applied okay but in your exam monthly and hmrc or taxpayer they can elect for precise method how see if it's for taxpayer taxpayer definitely wants to pay less tax so they will choose a method which gives them low benefit if it's under average method they are getting low they will choose average or the best precise hmrc will choose which gives a higher right so if precise method let's say is giving the higher rate they will opt for precise now if the loan is up to 10000 no benefit beyond 10000 only benefit will be charged and that's for the total loan not one individual loan okay all the loans add up should not be beyond 10000 now third vouchers we have cash voucher that is the cash amount exchangeable for then we have non cash voucher that is cost to the employer then we have credit card 
cost charged to card for personal use. Fourth, cars. This is little detailed and it often comes in your exam. But trust me, it is one of the easiest also because we have been doing these questions multiple times on cars. Okay, even in this lecture, we have done lots of questions in cars, in fact, with fuel. So you have to take first appropriate percentage and list price. Remember, sometimes as it is, you can take the list price, but sometimes due to some capital contributions by employees, some improvements, you have to adjust. And appropriate percentage is same the way you calculate. So this is the table that you need to remember. First, you need to see whether it's a petrol or a diesel. Okay. Whether it is meeting diesel, not meeting RD2 standard, meeting RD2 standard. Okay. So 51 to 54 grams, 15 percent for petrol, 19 percent for diesel, and greater than 55 percent, sorry, 55 grams, greater or equal, 16, 20. And anything above 55, you keep on adding 1% to it. For each 5 grams over 55 is 1%. So when you do this, okay, let's say 280. 280 is the gram. So what do you do? 280 minus 55 divide by 5 because the number needs to be divisible by 5. If it's not 280, sometimes you are perfectly given a number which is divisible by 5. So no need to change. 280, 280. What's, what if it's 279, 279 grams, that, I mean, if it is so, then if it's 289, you have to round down to 285, not round up, round down, okay, to a number divisible by 5, which is 285, you can't divide 289 by 5, so 285, so 285 minus 55 divided by 5, whatever the percentage, you either you will be adding it with 16% or 20%, based on whether it is RD2 standard or not, meeting the RD2 standard or not. And max is 37, both for petrol and diesel. You can't go beyond 37. If you're getting 42%, it will be 37% only. Now, electric cars with zero emission is 2%. For hybrid cars, this is the table you have to use based on the electric range. Okay. So, higher the miles, lower the percentage and lower the miles higher the percentage as you can see it's increasing from 2 to 14 percent okay then list price is the next thing you can add any cost of extras that is there for the cars then any capital contribution by employee towards the purchase price of the car you can reduce from the list price but maximum has to be 5000 if someone is contributing 6000 you can only deduct 5000 if someone is contributing 4000 you deduct 4000 no problem. Amount limit is 5000. And if a car is unavailable for more than 30 consecutive days, you have to apportion it. Time apportion. But let's say uh, for 15 days is unavailable. Again, after 15 days is available. Again, it's unavailable. You can't do keep on doing like this. It's available only throughout the taxi. For it to be unavailable, 30 consecutive days, it has to be unavailable. Not one day it is available, another day it is available, no. And then you count the number of days and say 30 days unavailable, no. Consecutive. Okay. No benefit on pool car. If the car is being used by multiple employees, no benefit. Next is fuel. Fuel also you take appropriate percentage into 25,300. This 25,300 is fixed for this year, tax year, which you need to know. That's the base figure. And the appropriate percentage, you will get it from the percentage that was calculated while you have calculated car benefit. It's always the same. That means to calculate fuel, you need to calculate the car benefit to get the appropriate percentage. And one more thing, fuel will come when car is there. If any benefit is given for a particular car, fuel also will come. Whether they have mentioned or not about that benefit does not matter. You still have to calculate fuel. It's like a complementary product because cars cannot go on without fuel they need fuel right you can't play tennis without a ball you need a ball you need the tennis ball you need the racket and the ball then only you can play a match same like that fuel and car goes together so whether they mention calculate fuel benefit or not you have to do it unless specifically they tell you that for this car fuel is not provided then you don't 
appropriate percentage is same as for car benefit ignore any partial contributions by employee as i told you except fuel any other benefit if their employees have contributed also you can deduct it from your benefit except fuel fuel either employee pays full they bear the full cost and then there's no benefit or they don't pay anything and pay tax on that full benefit no partial contribution is accepted sorry van private use 3600 per year zero c2 emission zero benefit no benefit private fuel 688 because with van also you need a fuel here they have already decided for van private fuel is 688 no fuel benefit on zero c2 emission car no benefit charge for van also no fuel benefit also simple unavailable is the same as the car greater than 30 consecutive days unavailable a portion now next is living accommodation first you have to take the basic charge which is higher off number one annual value number two rent paid by employer sometimes you are not given any information regarding rent paid by employer then you have to take the annual value only most of the question in fact that we have done is only annual value right so that would be your basic charge if they give you the rent paid by employer then you take higher of this two annual value of rent paid by employer otherwise it is annual value number one number two rent paid by employer will be zero so in short basic charge will be annual value where rent is not given information about rent is not given two the next one you will be given an expensive accommodation where it's the the amount the cost of the accommodation is more than 75000 that is known as expensive for that you need additional charge you add this with the basic charge the amount minus 75000 cost minus 75000 into 2% because that is the official interest rate your cost is the purchase price you can also add any capital improvements up to the start of the tax year that means any improvement after the tax year will not be taken as purchase price but if it's taken before the tax year start of the tax year yes you can add with the purchase price and if owned by employer for six years before the first occupation employer has owned it for six years before giving it to employee then you have to use the market value not the purchase price when you are what comparing it with the 75000 for the expensive accommodation charge additional charge you have to take where right now you are taking costless 75000 there that time if it's more than 6 year you have to take market value minus 75000 rest everything is same into 2% not the purchase price this is only if it's 6 more than 6 years if it's less than 6 year 4 year 5 year then normally cost minus 75000 otherwise market value minus 75000 with accommodation comes expenses so here cost to the employer next use of asset take 20 percent of the market value of that asset when first made away level number 10 job related accommodation is exempt so no basic charge no additional charge but any expenses and any use of asset from that job related accommodation is taxed it is restricted to 10 percent of net income or net employment income of the employee so that's it thank you for watching and thanks also for bearing with me this long lecture i think it's more than 4 or 30 minutes and this is one of my lecture that has i think i've broken record on my own channel i think this is the biggest lecture in terms of length of the video that i've ever made i've never exited i think more than three of I don't think I've reached even four hours. So, you know, it's, it's a miracle. Anyways, thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also tell your friends about the existence of this channel so that they can quickly come and subscribe and also get lectures of other subjects, not just taxation. I also have taught AFM, SBR, SBL, AAA, 
and right now I'm teaching tax and for December, inshallah, I'll be hoping to finish ATX as well. Thank you and take care.